As Brian alluded to moments ago, there's going to be some bad blood tonight. 13th ranked Indiana traveling to Illinois, 9 Eastern, ESPN. Super freshman Eric Gordon making his first trip to Champaign after switching his commitment from Illinois to Indiana during his senior year in high school. Gordon had 17 points in their first meeting this season, a 62-58 win at home. Gordon has lived up to the hype thus far, leading the Big Ten in scoring just under 22 per. That's four points more than the second leading score teammate DJ White. Gordon has three 30-point games this season, which ties current Atlanta Hawks head coach Mike Woodson for the most by a freshman in school history. Rivalry renewed. Brought to you by Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. And from the world of the bizarre, high school lineman Kevin Hart in Nevada says he made it all up. The 6'5", 290-pounder made a show of making a commitment to go to Cal over Oregon, but then coaches quickly said they never heard of him. Uh, it seemed initially that Hart had been a victim of a cruel prank, but Hart now says he made up what he wanted to be reality. Local police and school administrators are continuing their investigation. You know, he can still go to Cal. Hope his grades are way up, though. <laughs> you can go and you walk on, but uh, I guess that's better than being a prank. That, that would yeah, be awful. Yes, yeah, yes. I look, feel bad for him. I know he did it to himself, but he's on the radar. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for watching Sports Center. <laughs> Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price as part of Rivalry Week presented by Cisco. Welcome to one of the toughest places to play in college basketball, the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh, where the Panthers have lost only nine times in six years. Tonight they face arch rival West Virginia in another edition of the Backyard Brawl. Both these teams in the thick of things in the Big East at five and four, tied for sixth. Only three and a half games separate third from 13th in the Big East. Everybody with Len Elmore, I'm Dave Pash, Alan Hopkins here as well. Len, big game on a couple of fronts, won both these teams fighting for an NCAA tournament bid and, of course, the rivalry, the backyard brawl. Well, in NCAA tournament terms, I think both of these teams are in. Pit in pretty comfortably. West Virginia may be in by a hair, but you cannot relax at this point in time. I mean, you look at Syracuse last year, 24 and 11, 10 conference wins, and they didn't get in. Now, the bottom line for both of these guys is that you've got to come out here and you've got to play. There's this rivalry thing going on, and it's spilled over. This backyard brawl spilled over from football, and as any West Virginia football fan knows, you can take nothing for granted when you play Pittsburgh. You think the fans here in the Oakland Zoo have forgotten what took place just a couple months ago. That's the score from the football game when West Virginia lost to Pittsburgh at home. Our Star Watch, presented by Bass Pro Shops, features DeWan Blair, knows a thing or two about this rivalry, having grown up here in Pittsburgh. Well, Joe Alexander for West Virginia, 13th in the conference in scoring, really had to get it going. And as far as Pittsburgh is concerned, Dewan Blair, two consecutive double doubles. He's the Big East rookie of the year so far. And joining Joe Alexander in the starting lineup for West Virginia will be Jamie Smalligan along with Deshaun Butler, Alex Ruoff, and Darius Nichols, who has led West Virginia in scoring the last three games. Pittsburgh at 17 and 5. Keith Benjamin, averaging 12 points a game in Big East play, will be joined by Ronald Ramon, Gilbert Brown, Sam Young, candidate for most improved player in the Big East Conference, and, and the aforementioned Dewan Blair. Our Sonic rivalry, 174th meeting. First was in the 1903-04 season. Len remembers that well. <laughs> West Virginia one and two here at the peak, but one of only nine teams to win ever here at the Peterson Event Center. We showed you that starting five for Pittsburgh. One guy noticeably absent, LeVance Fields. With an update on his status, here's Alan Hopkins. Thank you. Good evening, Dave. I had a chance to talk to LeVance Fields in the training room just about 20 minutes ago. He went to the doctor today. The x-rays showed that the bone in his left foot that had a pin inserted after his surgery on December 31st is healing just fine. And barring no setbacks, LeVance told me he expects to be cleared for the next phase of his rehab, which will include some stationary shooting and some light jogging there's no more setback he thinks he'll be in the lineup perhaps as soon as his home game against Louisville on February 24th but one thing we know Dave the team is playing well without him but if they're going to make a deep run in the tournament they need him healthy and on the court well, he is a key guy averaging five and a half assists 
assists per game this year before he fractured his left foot. He and Mike Cook are both out. Cook done for the year with a knee injury, and Jamie Dixon's team six and four without those guys after an 11 and 0 start, which included a win against Duke, the only team to beat Duke. And as we saw last night, Duke pretty good, winning in Chapel Hill. I'll say, and the reason why Levant Fields is so important is because he can handle that ball pressure. Bob Huggins remembers this rivalry well from his playing days. He was 6-2 and two as a player against Pittsburgh when he was at West Virginia. 0-2 oh as a coach with both those games coming when he was the head coach at Akron in the late 80s. West Virginia wearing new uniforms tonight. First time they put these on. And not a good start as Alexander puts up an air ball. Well, Pittsburgh thrives on defense. It's constant, and it's kept them in games despite the injury storm. Fourth in points allowed, fourth in scoring margin. They really focus on shutting you down. Pittsburgh still ranked despite going six and five in its last 11 games. His player misses, but it's their lowest ranking since December of 2005 when they were not ranked. West Virginia, boy, what a difference in conference play. They had been beating teams by an awful lot, over 20 points a game, before conference play began. And now, they're actually minus four in rebounds. Their margin is cut down dramatically. They're shooting under 40%. You know, this is, the honeymoon is over, pretty much. Bob Huggins really trying to put his stamp on this team. And it's been a difficult adjustment. Ball was on Sam Young, the first foul in the game. We mentioned that Darius Nichols has led West Virginia in scoring in each of the last three. 19 points per game during that span and tied a career high with 23 on Saturday in a win at Providence. Well, he's been the most consistent player for West Virginia. He's had seven consecutive double-figure games and really the leader on the floor. He's just got to get his mates running with him. Alexander had an opportunity on one end, and then Pitt can't score on the other. Alexander, very streaky, number 11 in gold. 19 points, 8 boards against Providence. As the shot goes from the corner for Smalligan. That is so important for Jamie Smalligan to be able to establish himself outside. Pulling Deron Blair out from underneath the basket, and Smalligan... He's been held scoreless in six of the last ten games, so he's got to feel a little more confident about himself after that make. Only 17% from three on the season, but last year shot 46% from three. Young off the dribble, and the athletic Joe Alexander stuffed it right back in his face. Well, Alexander's so quick off his feet. And right there, if you're Sam Young, you better start providing a few ball fakes right now to get Alexander off balance. I wonder how many athletes he's played that are like Alexander. Benjamin gets the bounce playing excellent basketball since the injuries to both Cook and Fields averaging 13 points per game over his last 10. First basket of the game for Pittsburgh. Here's Alexander off the small again screen. Can't hit the fall away. But Butler there with the rebound. Put back won't go and Blair clears. Ahead to Young, nicely done. Well, that was a good job by Sam Young to run out. Juan Blick, um, sorry, Deshaun Butler with the offensive rebound stuck underneath the basket, and Young takes off. The running game puts pressure on West Virginia. Here's Ruoff, one of the top three-point shooters in the Big East Conference. Deshaun Butler getting position down low, but then Brown cuts off the angle. Another miss by Alexander. He's 0 for 4. Another missed putback by Butler, and here comes Pittsburgh's Ramon on the run. Go on, Blair, averaging a double-double in Biggie's games, called for charging. That's his first personal second on Pitt. We're well, talking about the running game, place and pressure. There's Butler. Underneath the basket shooting the ball and Sam Young has already taken off And Butler just couldn't catch up And what that does is puts the plants a seed in the mind of the offensive players For West Virginia particularly the front line guys that if they're stuck under the basket once the play is over They better get back quickly
West Virginia off to a one for seven start from the field. Nichols missing the three. Rebounded by Gilbert Brown. On a redshirt freshman from Harrisburg, PA, took a medical redshirt last year. Blair, no good. Re threw off with the rebound. Butler. Another miss for West Virginia. And here come the Panthers again. And again, the big men running the floor. This time, West Virginia, much better job getting back. Ruoff already back defending. But pretty athletic front line, something that Pittsburgh really hadn't had over the last couple of years. To take nothing away from Aaron Gray and what he was able to do for Pitt, he just wasn't as mobile as Dewan Blair. And having a guy who can run the floor like that gives you an added dimension. Meanwhile, Len, West Virginia's start looks a lot like the Cincinnati game when... They had their worst shooting night in school history, only 20% from the field. They did bounce back against Providence to shoot 51% from the floor. As uh, there's going to be a tripping foul called on Sam Young, and that's two already on Young and three on Pittsburgh. Well, that's a big blow. Sam Young now is going to have to take a seat on the bench. Going to be replaced by Terrell Biggs. And Sam Young leading score for this team. You talk about candidate for most improved player at Big East, but here's a guy that has scored double figures in 21 out of the 22 games that they played, he could be a candidate for a player of the year. Well, you have to think at this point, Luke Heron Goatee for Notre Dame is the front runner. Either him or Roy Hibbert, Georgetown leading the conference. Meanwhile, you mentioned Biggs coming in. Remember, Jamie Dixon only has nine healthy scholarship players with the injuries to Cook and Fields. West Virginia desiring to spread the floor right now so they can get their backdoor cuts. Their curls off of screens really makes it difficult on the defense. Got to communicate. Nichols three not there. West Virginia one out of ten now from the field. Despite horrible shooting for West Virginia, Mountaineers tied with Pittsburgh at four early on. Then we'll see who will be outscored. Discipline investing. At T. Rowe Price, it's not just about the short term. It's about a steady, long-term approach. For each three, five, and 10-year period, over 70% of our mutual funds beat their Lipper average. Low-cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. Oh, hi. I'm Jackie Moon. I drink one beer and one beer only. Bud Light. A magical blend of barley, hops, and delicious alcohol. Got a, it's not a lime. Action. Makes a perfect Valentine's gift for the ladies. Hot. A lot of sweat goes into every bottle. Not literally, that would be gross, but you know what I mean. Hot. Refreshes the palate. And the loins. Hot. Bud Light, suck one. Semi-Pro in theaters February 29th. Our engineers had a mission. Give Sierra more power, more performance, and examine everything that makes a Sierra a Sierra. Mission accomplished. The 2008 Sierra from GMC. The available 5.3 liter V8 offers 315 horsepower and the best V8 fuel economy of any full-size pickup. The Sierra from GMC. Just because it hasn't been done doesn't mean it can't be done. For inside commentary and the real NBA story, read the True Hoop blog on ESPN.com. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by T. Rowe Price, providing investment management excellence for over 70 years. Invest with confidence. And in part by Bud Light. Endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. And GMC. We are professional grade. The animals are loose now at the Oakland Zoo, but at 2 o'clock, they were caged in waiting for tickets for tonight's game. We would never promote that, but we're certainly glad that they made it in here to the arena. And this great rivalry dates back to the 1903-1904 season. John Higgins had no problem getting a ticket for this game, although had a little trouble getting the Syracuse game that he was officiating last night. Had some travel problems and actually was a substitution with uh, about eight minutes into that game and that Syracuse lost to Connecticut at home. I'm glad John's here. He's joined by Carl Hess and J.D. Collins, our officiating crew tonight. 
Nice defensive play there by Wellington Smith. But all defense so far with Pittsburgh just two of eight from the field. West Virginia one out of ten. Oh, nice move by the sophomore Wellington Smith, who's averaging five points per game. Well, excellent recognition by Joe Alexander. Smith streaking along the baseline. And Wellington Smith, athletic, has terrific potential. He was going to be the next West Virginia star, still has a chance to be that. First foul on West Virginia as Nichols reaches in and slaps Gary McGee. Take a look at Joe Alexander right now on the drive draws the defender McGee really not cognizant of the cutter as he is paying so much attention to Joe Alexander getting into the paint. You know as you look at the Big East line you see Georgetown atop the standings at nine and one and then you have Notre Dame seven and two Connecticut and Louisville both seven and three and they have a bunch of teams anywhere between six and four and four and six. Are you surprised that Georgetown only has one loss for a while there it looked like you might have a four or five loss team winning the Big East, but maybe it's a two or three loss Georgetown team that wins it. Well, I'll tell you, Georgetown has really demonstrated resiliency. I mean, they have gone down in some games. They've been able to come back. They've been able to close close games. And most importantly, winning on the road, four and one on the road for them in this conference. That's the most important thing. Hold serve at home where they're undefeated and steal a couple on the road. Well, they've done more than that. Veteran team with a lot of talent. And Joe Lenardi right now has eight Big East teams in his bracket. West Virginia he has as the last team in. West Virginia with 16 wins. Pittsburgh with 17 as the Mountaineers nearly turn it over, but it ends up in the hands of Butler. He can't score, but he'll go to the line. That's the fourth Pittsburgh team foul. And we're talking about Georgetown. The Hoyas will be in action tomorrow. They'll make that Saturday. Great day of Big East basketball at noon. Marquette and Notre Dame, followed by Georgetown at Louisville. Tough one for the Hoyas on Saturday primetime, presented by DirecTV, part of Rivalry Week, presented by Cisco, Saturday on ESPN. Well, that's one of those games for Georgetown that can create even greater separation. Louisville just two games out at 7 and 3. Playing pretty well at home, 4 and 1 in the conference. Good win over Marquette on Monday for Louisville. Deshaun Butler from Newark. Averaging 13.6 rebounds per game. He's been very active so far with three rebounds and now his first point of the contest. And we are tied at seven. It's important for Deshaun Butler to really get it going. Average only eight points and six rebounds over the last three games. Normally average about 13 a game. Jamie Dixon going to his bench with Wanamaker on the floor along with two other reserves. McGee, one of those reserves. Looked like a starter there with good position in the stop. Big body, good elevation, strong to the basket. Gary McGee just a solid developing big body in there. With a baby face. He's a freshman from Anderson, Indiana. Pittsburgh by two, seven minutes gone by. Nichols gets past Ramon for the layup. When we talk about Darius Nichols again, so consistent, just picks his spots. He's got the ability to take over and, and quietly, he's the leader on the floor for this West Virginia team. Playing in his 127th consecutive game. The school record is 128. Four players hold that mark. And that's part of leadership. You know, first of all, you got to show up. And Nichols does it night in, night out. Shot clock down to six. The first three point try for Pittsburgh in the game. No good by Benjamin. Smulligan hit a three earlier. Here's Smith on the drive. Two nice drives by Wellington Smith. He's got four points. Well, you got a mismatch right there. Terrell Biggs not quick enough to guard Wellington Smith on the perimeter.
For the easiest way to follow your favorite team on the road at the best prices guaranteed, go with Expedia, the official travel sponsor of the NFL. Expedia.com. Expedia wants to get you to Hawaii this winter with Hawaiian Airlines. Visit Expedia.com slash NFL for great travel packages to the 2008 NFL Pro Bowl and beyond. This ESPN College Basketball presentation is brought to you in high definition by Olivia HD. Wellington Smith with a couple of baskets driving to the goal early on for West Virginia. Well, if you're Terrell Biggs, you've got to know your personnel. Smith only 27% from beyond the arc, 39% from the field, and Biggs closed too quickly. You got to back off knowing that he can beat you off the bounce and so athletic, you got to make him beat you from outside. Wellington Smith had only four points in his last outing against Providence. East Virginia's made three straight shots after a one for ten start that looked very similar to their 20 percent shooting night in a bad home loss to Cincinnati. Ramon misses on one end but a steal on the other by one of the biggest leader in steals Blair. But Pitt turns it right back over numbers for West Virginia. Nichols finds Butler who's fouled by Ramon. Two point lead for West Virginia here in Pittsburgh eight minutes in. Inspiration pulled from your life. That's professional grade. That's the Acadia from GMC. With the simplest form of navigation available and a five star crash safety rating, Acadia is helping to redefine the category. Welcome to Acadia, the crossover from GMC. Imagine a world where human beings cease to be human. Fios TV On Demand brings you thousands of the hottest shows and movies anytime you want. I am stuffed. After that meal, I have got to pass gas. Uh, powder room's right there. No! Daddy's gas can kill us all! That's right. Toxic clouds like the one I'm about to unleash could make everyone deathly ill. Even that baby of yours. Be right back. Secondhand smoke contains hydrogen cyanide and other deadly gases. What a guy. He is a keeper. Don't pass gas. Take it outside. Back in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Panthers trailing at home to West Virginia. Eight minutes into the first half, 11 to 9. Great rivalry in basketball, even bigger in football. Dave wants this Panthers stun number two West Virginia just a couple of months ago, 13 to 9. Rich Rodriguez's final game as head coach in West Virginia. Biggest win in the Dave Wanstead era at Pittsburgh. And it kept West Virginia from playing for a national title. And they, of course, remember that well here at the Peterson Event Center. And they won't let the Mountaineers forget it. And West Virginia, like the New England Patriots, oh so close to an undefeated season. The famous almost chance. Oh, my. And who knows, had Rodriguez won that game and then won the national title game, would he still be in West Virginia coaching the man in the middle right there, Jared Brown, the backup quarterback to Pat White. West Virginia did have a pretty good signing day. They actually inked Pat White's younger brother, Coley White, quarterback out of Alabama. Pittsburgh had a really good day, considered a top 25 recruiting class, led by wide receiver Jonathan Baldwin from here in Aliquippa. Butler gets the first free throw. He's got two points in the game for the Mountaineers. Well, as you would expect, both of these teams in this backyard brawl just grinding it out. Neither shooting particularly well. 31% for West Virginia, 33% for Pitt. Of course, Rich Rodriguez, just to finish that story, now the head coach in Michigan, along with John Beeline, who left the West Virginia basketball program. And Rodriguez hoping for more success than Beeline, who's 5 and 17, 1 and 9 in the Big Ten. I think with John Beeline, you have to give it some time. He's got a system that takes a while to install and takes the right guys to put in. 
Ramon with the three, the first deep shot that drops for Pittsburgh tonight. That ends a 6 0 West Virginia run. Here's Smith, who has a couple of baskets, four points to lead all West Virginia scores. You see right now, Wellington Smith being guarded by Dwan Blair a little bit quicker than Terrell Biggs. And nice play defensively that time by Biggs. Wanamaker left open, and he cans a three. Only the third made three for Wanamaker this season, freshman out of Philadelphia. Three of 17, and he did not hesitate. Yeah, that's confidence instilled. Primarily by the bench. Coaches say you get an open shot, knock it down. Alexander struggling offensively tonight. 0 out of 5. Bob Huggins not happy. We'll go to his bench. Well, here, playing guys in the post, a lot easier for Biggs. Alexander trying to make room with the dip of the shoulder, and Biggs would not move. And Wanamaker right there got that foot set. Nobody on him, and as I said, did not hesitate. So you know that's confidence flowing. And midway through this first half, Pittsburgh getting its offense from guys off the bench while Dewan Blair, who gets fouled on the inside by Smalligan, doesn't have a point. Blair is 0 out of 3 from the field. And Dewan Blair's had some pretty easy shots now. He's missed two layups and a little baby hook from the baseline, uncharacteristic of a guy that shoots pretty well. 53% from the field. Blocking foul is called. As Biggs was driving on Wellington Smith. First on Smith, third on West Virginia. Let's bring in Allen Hopkins now. Yeah, you saw Alexander getting the quick hook from Coach Huggins. He's been nursing and really playing through a groin injury that's really slowed him down. He told me he's not going to be 100% for the rest of the season. going to have to be something that he fights through and has to play with. They do have a week off West Virginia after this game, and Huggins is going to give him two or three days off himself to try to get that groin injury ready, but it's going to be something that's going to nag and be part of his game for the rest of the year. Clearly, though, it is affecting his sweet stroke as he's not really been the offensive player a conference play we saw a non-conference play day. And, and Alan, I'll tell you what's also affecting his stroke, the fact that over the last several games, the second leading scorer, Alex Ruoff, a guy who is among the leaders in three-point percentage as well as three-pointers made, hasn't taken a shot from the field, hasn't really been involved in the offense. And so when a guy like that is hesitant to put the ball up, you let the defense load up on your leading scorer, Joe Alexander. Foul on Wellington Smith is the second and the fourth on West Virginia. The third foul on this possession, and Pittsburgh can't get a basket as Benjamin misses. Joe Mazzulla's in along with Flowers, and you were talking about Ruoff. He just went to the bench, and Bob Huggins still talking to him over on the Mountaineer bench. Well, Huggins is searching right now for some combination of guys that can light a fire offensively. To start that fire, you need a spark. And nobody right now beyond Nichols has really given them anything. Maybe Wellington Smith, another guy who's a slasher, gets to the basket. They need to look at guys now who are going to get more involved in the offense, occupy the Pittsburgh defense. Conversely, everything that Jamie Dixon seems to dial up this season, with the exception of that home blemish against Rutgers, their only home loss this year, seems to work. As Benjamin is pushed underneath the basket, you know, Dixon and his staff did a great job despite the injuries to Fields and Cook this year. Well, to be fair to Bob Huggins, though, this is a new team for him. He's trying to slowly but surely install a new system. A lot of remnants from the B-line system remain, but he's trying to fit in things, make these guys tougher, more defensive focused, better rebounders, while Jamie Dixon has had this team and had the continuity of these young guys as well as some of the seniors to be able to build and you're right he knows them so well anything he dials comes up and Blair with his first field goal of the game it's an eight to nothing Pittsburgh run and a steal by Blair and that's another thing that makes him so tough quick feet excellent anticipation Juan Blair fourth in the conference in steals and that's unusual to have a center to do that Ten straight points for Pittsburgh, and Bob Huggins calls for time. This is what makes Dewan Blair the crowd favorite right there. Excellent execution, uses a screen across well. And here, the anticipation. 
He just beat Smalligan to the spot. You see Smalligan stepping back, trying to reach, shooting the gap, finishing strong. Smalligan's got to step more to the ball and not give Blair that room. Dewan Blair played at Shenley High School, which is about a mile away from the Pitt campus. His house was 600 yards away from the Peterson Event Center. He's the first Pittsburgh City League player to play at Pitt since Darrell Porter in the late 80s. And we're talking about being a crowd favorite once again, trying to get this crowd back into the ball game. Before the game, you see him over there chatting with the students, his fellow students. Just trying to be a regular guy. I keep kidding him. I said, when you graduate, man, why don't you just run for mayor? <laughs> I'm sure he gets some votes. One of his final schools, as there's an offensive foul call in West Virginia, was Kansas State. Bob Huggins was there last year for one season. I think he made the right choice. <laughs> Joe Alexander commits the foul, his first. And the 16 foul of the Mountaineers as Cam Thurlman comes into the game. And you talked about Bob Huggins just searching for anybody to step up offensively. Thurlman played very well, 21 minutes against Providence. Had some good defensive stops and had two points. And he had played only seven games all year prior to last weekend. Well, Bob Huggins looking for that spark, as I mentioned before. Somebody who can either make a defensive stop or put some points on the board. Thurlman right there kind of forces Blair into travel just by playing him tough. It's kind of a mismatch right there. Blair much bigger and stronger. And it's all about position on the defensive end. Jerome and redshirted last year. He was kind of an outcast from his teammates. A very quiet guy, but he endeared himself and became kind of a mascot-like guy on his roster when he started chasing lizards in a suit. <laughs> yeah, that'll endear yourself to anybody. They fell in love with the guy. And he gave him good minutes the other night. Missoula strokes home a two. His foot was on the line. So Missoula's been a key guy for Bob Huggins' squad this year in their 16 and 6 start. And Joe Missoula with the quickness, with the ability to dig in and apply ball pressure as he's doing to keep Benjamin right now. Very valuable coming off the bench. You talk about a spark. Boy, Benjamin just barely avoided a backcourt violation. And then Benjamin fouled by Missoula. Missoula's first and the 17th foul in West Virginia. Pittsburgh leads by four at home. Trying to go to 13 and one at home this year. You can look shocked like you ain't no out. Let's go get him. Good luck. Hey, car is out. NASCAR Nationwide Series at Daytona. Coverage begins next Saturday with the Camping World 300 on ESPN2. Our engineers had a mission. Give Sierra more power, more performance, and examine everything that makes a Sierra a Sierra. Mission accomplished. The 2008 Sierra from GMC. The available 5.3-liter V8 offers 315 horsepower and the best V8 fuel economy of any full-size pickup. The Sierra from GMC. Just because it hasn't been done doesn't mean it can't be done. Fun can hit any time once you've been to Dave & Buster's. Now eat and play with a $10 game card only $15.99 or double your games for 8 bucks more. Fun like this stays with you. Like Zoinks, it's the cable guy. Well, now that DirecTV has way more HD channels than cable, he had to try to stop everyone from switching to DirecTV. <laughs> Get over 90 of the best channels in HD now on DirecTV. You won't see them prancing in the end zone or preening for the cameras. Nope. They're too busy defending their turf and sometimes wearing it. All in the name of protecting the quarterback, the offensive lineman. Guys like Nasty, Stink, Jumbo, and Jimbo. State Farm salutes the centers, the guards, the tackles. Because we know there's no substitute for great protection. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number 22, Austin Carr. Simply put, Austin Carr was a scorer. This two-time All-American from Notre Dame scored a record 61 points in a 1970 NCAA tournament game. IBM, getting it done.
And we'll count down the top 25 every night of college basketball. We'll announce the number one player of all time during the Carolina Duke game, March 8th. Austin Carr, great player at Notre Dame. Used to get schooled, though, by Len Elmore in the <laughs> NBA. Not really. Austin Carr is a scoring machine. And uh, I'll tell you what, he was the kind of guy, you talk about go-to guy, he's the go-to guy with a capital G. And speaking of go-to guys, the two leading scorers for West Virginia have not put a point up on the board. Joe Alexander 0 for 5 from the field, and Alex Ruoff, surprisingly, hasn't even attempted a field goal. And that's what, why West Virginia in part is in the hole by five. Can't get anybody started offensively. Only 31% from the field for West Virginia. Alexander averages 15 points per game, but we mentioned that he's been streaky. Had an 0 for 9 six point game against Cincinnati, but everybody was off that night for West Virginia. They bounce back to beat Providence. They're down six, though, to Pittsburgh after Benjamin gets both free throws. Well, that February 2nd, 19 points against Providence, that was his first double figure game since January 17th. So Joe Alexander struggling, and as I said, needs to get it started if West Virginia's going to get started. John Flowers misses. Gary McGee the rebound. Sam Young back on the floor for Pittsburgh, playing with two fouls. He only has two points in the game. Pittsburgh with another turnover. It's fifth of the first half. Well, everybody. At least on the Pittsburgh side, screaming that there was a deflection. But the officials either said it wasn't or they didn't see it. Pittsburgh 92 and 9 all time at the Peterson Event Center. West Virginia, one of the nine teams to win here, but no opponent has won twice here at the Peterson Event Center. But already with a win at home against Georgetown. The only loss for the Hoyas in Big East play. Shot clock at eight. And that's the guy you want to get the ball to, Darius Nichols, although he shoots an air ball right there. He makes up for it. Nice steal by Nichols. Another missed shot, though, by him. He's one for four from the field. And it will go to Pittsburgh. Amy Dixon's squad over the last six years with 91% winning percentage, and you see that two of those losses here at home were in overtime, including the Marquette last season. And all the losses except for one were in conference. Yeah, how did Bucknell get up on that? Yeah. In 2005, Pittsburgh had a pretty good team. Bucknell, a surprise. Obviously, perennial Patriot League contenders. You know, Pittsburgh is the only Big East school with 20 or more wins overall and 10 or more conference wins each of the last six years that's a school record and no one else has done that in the Big East during that time frame of course it was started by Ben Howland who's now the head coach at UCLA and continued by Jamie Dixon well, if you look out on the floor right here I don't know what kind of chemistry you got you don't have any real post-up scores you got Darius Nichols and Joe Mazzilla who can handle who can slash no really knock down three point shooters except for Nichols and that allows Pittsburgh to sag. It allows them to get in the paint places where they need to defensively. But a foul on Pittsburgh. Rivalry week concludes with a doubleheader Monday night on ESPN. First at 7 Eastern. Villanova losers of five in a row taking on Georgetown. Followed by a good one in the Big 12 between Kansas and Texas. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Part of rivalry week presented by Cisco. When I say that Pittsburgh can get places where they need to defensively, they can sag on the guys who aren't going to really hurt them from outside and clog up the driving lanes for guys like Nichols and Mazzola. McGee with a foul is first, the sixth on Pittsburgh. Much needed three point basket by Butler, just the second three for West Virginia tonight. Well, the one thing in West Virginia's favor, they do share the ball, 16 assists per game. You know, they'll find open men, but right now, only a couple of guys out there who can knock down the perimeter shot and with regularity. Excuse me, well, they don't turn it over either. First in the Big East in turnover margin, fourth in the country in assist to turnover ratio. But a foul called on Thurlman for West Virginia, his first of the eighth on the Mountaineers as we go back to the studio, Sports Center 30 and 30 in Darinoco.
All right, guys, thank you. Attorneys for Roger Clemens' former trainer, Brian McNamee, supplied the government evidence they think will prove Clemens was injected with steroids. Among the evidence supplied, two color photographs of needles and vials of testosterone. Boston newspapers reporting Kurt Schilling has a shoulder injury that could keep him out for the season. There may be a discrepancy between Schilling and the team on whether or not he needs surgery. Sports Center coming up after Indiana, Illinois. Guys. All right, Dara, you were talking about the Clemens story. Len, you're an attorney. You look at the Clemens situation. To be, but <laughs> <laughs> you look at the, the Clemens situation. If they have the evidence and they can get DNA on Roger Clemens, what are, is the likelihood of them being able to uh, prosecute Clemens? Well, again, if Clemens, like Barry Bonds, is accused of, if he's accused of lying to a federal investigator then obviously that type of that type of charge is very serious and it's taken very seriously we've seen a number of, of athletes who've been prosecuted because they did not tell the truth to federal investigators you don't have to talk to the investigators but if you do you got to tell them the truth and if it's under oath in any type of proceeding um, whether congressional or otherwise again there's an opportunity to go after them but you know we have to take it a little bit slower either way with Clemens with all that evidence that's presented or so-called evidence presented by McNamee, that's direct evidence. And if they can tie that with the DNA and the DNA is mixed with the steroids or whatever, then, you know, it's a pretty solid case as opposed to Barry Bonds, which is more circumstantial stuff. I mean, the government obviously feels that they can prove the case against Barry Bonds, but with the evidence that McNamee is providing, if that turns out, it's going to be a much easier job to prove it against Clemens. Four minutes to go here in the first half. Pittsburgh leading by four in a low-scoring game. And this great rivalry, the backyard brawl between Pittsburgh and West Virginia. Knocked out of bounds. It will stay Pitt basketball. Now Dewan Blair from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's a native. What do he and Andy Warhol have in common? We'll tell you when we come back. ABC. Your NBA Sunday destination. The best in the game takes center stage. Finish the wild. Sunday, the league-leading Celtics will find out if they truly belong amongst the game's elite as they host Tim Duncan and the defending champion Spurs. Then, Kobe Bryant and newly acquired big man Pal Gasol take the next step in their run at a championship as they battle the Heat. NBA Sunday, Spurs, Celtics, and Lakers Heat. Coverage begins at 12.30 Eastern on ABC. Hey, Jack. I thought you were getting a Toyota Corolla. Well, I was. Then I found out this Mazda 3's got more interior room, more standard horsepower, and been getting some great reviews. I don't see why anyone would get a Corolla. Right now, get 1.9% APR financing on the 08 Mazda 3 four-door and five-door. Discover a better way, the Zoom Zoom way. This Valentine's Day, give the sweetest of American traditions, Whitman's Chocolate, the Whitman's Sampler Heart, an American favorite since 1842. Going back home is never easy. Gotcha. Ah. He started. Ah. Welcome home, Roscoe Jenkins. I got my mouth. Rated PG-13 ah. starts tomorrow. New gear. Do you need it? We've got it. Bass Pro Shops has the latest gear at the lowest price guaranteed. And for a limited time, you can get a gift card worth up to $1,000 with select 2008 Tracker and Nitro boats. Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Dari Noka in studio coming up with the UPS halftime report. Fran Fraschilla going to break down via the UPS whiteboard, Georgetown, and the dynamic backdoor cut. We also get you set for a huge schedule of Big East basketball coming up on Saturday. It's all coming up at the half, but now back to Pittsburgh where we find David Lane. Guys? All right, Dari, look forward to hearing from you and Fran. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh leading West Virginia by four late in the first half. Mountaineers at only 18 points, and it was just a week ago against Cincinnati. They put up only 39 in that game. Alex Ruoff 
Fresh off the bench, played only six minutes, hasn't taken a shot, gets fouled after a steal. Benjamin is first and the seventh on the Panthers. Well, part of the problem for West Virginia, they have zero fast break points, zero second chance points. They haven't gotten anything easy. You know, Pittsburgh has turned it over six times, now seven times. That puts uh, West Virginia unable to convert those. This might be the first opportunity for points off turnovers. And you saw Joe Alexander on the bench. He's 0 out of 5 from the field. He hasn't scored. That's the first point for Ruoff. Alexander is their leading scorer. Ruoff is their second leading scorer. Only seven points in his last two games, though, coming into tonight. And just one of two on that trip. And he's a 92% free throw shooter in conference games. But West Virginia, all that aside, only down three points on the road where Pittsburgh has lost nine times in the last six years. Wanamaker finds Blair underneath, but he blew the layup, got it back, and missed again. And Missoula's got it now for West Virginia. Funny because before the game, Duan Blair was practicing his dunks with degree of difficulty, and here he's got a bunch of point-blank opportunities that he's missed. And meanwhile, Joe Missoula who was the MVP of a summer league in Pittsburgh when he was playing with and against some of the players on this pit roster ties the game at 22 and he's the leading scorer, second leading scorer rather for West Virginia in the game with five points. Well they say familiarity breeds contempt and Joe Mazzullo just playing in contempt of this Pittsburgh defense. Wanamaker with a nice dump down and the basket for Tyrell Biggs. Pittsburgh back up two with 225 to go in the first half. Missoula for three. Back to back triples by Joe Missoula. West Virginia back on top. Well, just picking up where he left off against Providence. 11 points, his first double figure game in four games. And Ian Bob Huggins looking for a combination, looking for guys that want to play, that want to play hard, and want to score. Just got called, though, for a second personal foul. And he's also looking for guys that don't foul out there in the open court. But there, Missoula does a nice job off the gamble by Wanamaker. He calmly steps up and knocks down the three. And that's what West Virginia needs. They need guys who are going to be offensive-minded right now, help put points on the board. And whenever Bob Huggins has needed a big play this year, he's gone to Joe Missoula. Missoula on the bench, though, as Jared Brown has to come in because Missoula has two fouls. And if you couldn't tell by the physique, Brown, a football player as well. In fact, he's the backup quarterback to Pat White. Joined the team in the middle of January. Was a 1,000-point scorer in high school. Now, joined the team in the middle of January, but you would think they'd have a jersey with his name on the back. <laughs> Brown's not so hard to spell. And new uniforms for West Virginia, so perhaps that's why. They just got him in for this game. See West Virginia shooting better from three-point land than it is from two-point land. We've had a handful of lead changes, five ties in this game. Right now, pit by one. On the baseline, Butler poked out of the hands of Biggs, and Ramon tracks it down. We're talking about struggling offensively. Pittsburgh, this is more their kind of pace right now, but they seem to be having trouble scoring with regularity, especially down low. Big guys, particularly Duan Butler, just having some difficulty putting the ball in the basket when he gets his hands on it around the basket. Last touch by Blair, so it'll stay West Virginia ball. Bob Huggins, a, a 1977 West Virginia graduate, a little bit older than 97. I wouldn't give his age on the air, but 77 graduate. He's a Morgantown native. And was 6 and 2 as a player against Pitt, including a 13.9 rebound effort at Pittsburgh at the old Fitzgerald Fieldhouse back in his senior season of 77. Well, you know, he had to tough those out. That's the kind of player he was. Brown way off the mark. Long rebound to Nichols. West Virginia trying to take the lead going into the locker room. Nichols all the way to the goal. Gets it to roll home. And again, Darius Nichols, you can't say enough about him. The way there are times during the course of the last several games where he's had to pick this team up, put it on his back. And right there, coast to coast. 
Four second difference between the game and shot clocks. Moan on Darius Nichols. Big possession for both. Obviously, Pitt wants to go out feeling good. West Virginia making a defensive stop may get the opportunity to go back at it. Nice play by Nichols, but Blair is there, but he can't hit. And out of bounds to West Virginia with six seconds remaining in the half. Now how many of those have we seen Duan Blair miss today? I mean, shots that normally he would knock down. Again, 54% from the field, using the glass light nicely and hit every piece of the rim except go down. He's two of nine, four points in the game. West Virginia by one. Here's Nichols with two seconds to go, along with a three point try, and that will end the half. Well, Jamie Dixon's got to be frustrated at the fact that his team dominated most of that first half, yet trails as DeJuan Blair struggled from the field just two of nine. Pitt did lead by as many as six. West Virginia's largest lead was four. Right now, the Mountaineers by one, and Bob Huggins is standing by with our Allen Hopkins. Thanks, Dave. Coach, you didn't shoot the ball well, but you guys are leading at halftime. How were you able to dictate the pace of the game? We've guarded all year. We just haven't scored the ball. I think we've given up over 70 one time in conference play, and, you know, I think we've done a solid job defensively. We just got to figure out a way to score. What's your point of emphasis at halftime? Maybe make a shot, you know, just see how it feels. I think if we made one, we might like it. We might want to make another one. All right, thanks, Coach. Uh -huh. Well, Bob Dave. Huggins has joked all year, Alan, saying, and we're supposed to be a shooting team, huh? 14th in the Big East in field goal percentage, only 33% in the first half, but a one-point lead at Pittsburgh as we go back to the studio and Dari Noka. Dari? All right, guys, thank you so much. Welcome into the UPS Halftime Report. I am Dari Noka, along with Fran Fraschilla in West Virginia, who's lost three in a row against Pittsburgh, has the one-point lead at the break. Uh, Pittsburgh hasn't lost back-to-back -back Big East games in almost two full years could happen tonight though what strikes you from the first half well I think the big thing is West Virginia is not a physical basketball team it's very much a perimeter team and and the big fella Dewan Blair only two for nine he has got to really get it going I think for Jamie Dixon because they have a size advantage down low take a look at the big guy scoring inside and then he gets one off of a defensive play runs right through that passing lane and that's his second field goal tonight but the young man averaging about 12, 13 points a game has got to give them a bigger lift in the second half. They have a sizable advantage inside with, uh, with Blair. This would be a huge win if West Virginia were able to pull it out. They've lost two or three, and they need to get that big win. Both teams five and four in conference play. These two teams get the weekend off, at least don't have to play games, but Big East teams are playing big ones. Big ones on the family networks on Saturday. We're going to get you ready for those games. Coming right up. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Cisco. Welcome to the Human Network. And Mazda, always the soul of a sports car. Shh, something's coming. What? Listen and learn. Turbocharged, direct injected, electroluminescent gauges. Sports car. It's the SUV with the soul of a sports car. The Mazda CX-7 crossover SUV. Zoom, zoom. Designed and engineered the Zoom Zoom way. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Right now, get 1.9% APR financing on the 2008 Mazda CX-7. We're late. Going somewhere with your Fiesta platters? A meeting? The meeting can wait. Fiesta platters are truly a meal, and meals are meant to be enjoyed. What's going on? Hola. Taco Bell's new grilled steak or chicken soft tacos, rice and beans, chips, and chunky salsa. Get it fast, enjoy it slow. Hola. Think outside the barn. You give a little love, and it all comes back to you. Jason Bourne is at large in New York City. This winter, we're going mobile. Let's look sharp. Bourne comes home. 
Where are you now? I'm sitting in my office. I doubt that. If you were in your office, we'd be having this conversation face to face. They can't stop me. The Bourne Ultimatum, now playing on demand. Fios TV On Demand brings you thousands of the hottest shows and movies anytime you want. Welcome to Progressive.com. Did you find your policy okay? I did. Saved over $350. We have a savings of $350. A savings of $350. You know, that comes with concierge claim service, local response claim service, and 24-7 live support, all at no extra charge. Wow. Wow, I know. I say it louder. Have a great day. Lots of extra features that don't cost you extra. Now that's Progressive. Call or click today. You're watching the UPS Halftime Report. Welcome back in. Fran Fraschilla, Dari Noka, and West Virginia. Despite this steal induced for Dewan Blair, has a 27-26 lead on pit at the break. Second half coming up in just a few moments. You know, both of these teams are off on Saturday, but other Big East teams have major tests in games on the ESPN family. 21st ranked Notre Dame on a roll. Four straight wins. They're 7-2 in conference, and they host Marquette. Trying to get back at Marquette, who spanked them in Milwaukee. And then how about one of the surprise teams, Jim Calhoun's Connecticut Huskies. Six wins in a row, and on Saturday, well, UConn steps out of conference play to host the ACC's Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Well, the five straight double single-digit wins means that the young Huskies are growing up. What has happened to Villanova? Five straight losses, including Saturday's 22-point blowout at the hands of St. Joseph's. Nova hosts Seton Hall on Saturday. They can use this one. They're only shooting 31% from outside the arc in Big East play. Not good enough. And then we go to the side of college game day as conference leading Georgetown visits Rick Pitino and his Louisville Cardinals. Georgetown's won six straight. Louisville has won four of five. What makes Georgetown so tough to defend? Let's go to Fran at the UPS whiteboard. Georgetown is the best team in the country at scoring inside the three-point arc. They shoot 57%. Why? Well, first, they have Roy Hibbert inside. But number two is they get a lot of layups because they space the floor well and get a lot of backdoor cuts. How do they set up the backdoor cut? If a Georgetown player is overplayed, we dribble at that man. That sets up the back cut and the one hand pass. Now, in the old days, we were taught to throw a chest pass with two hands, but when you backdoor cut, there's a limited amount of time with which your teammate is open, so we throw it off the one hand quickly, and that gets that ball through the defense, and we get a layup. Let's take a look at the videotape now, show you what we mean. Watch the great spacing. The defender's not paying attention to the ball. Now, watch the one hand pass right off the wrist. Right past that defender's butt, and we score. Take a look at another sequence now. The kick out. Dribble at the man over play. Hibbert clears up the lane. The defender watches the ball, not his man. And there's space for the backdoor cut and the layup. Let's take a look at that same play in real time. Dribble at, backdoor. Great spacing. Now, when the defense takes away the backdoor cut, it opens it up. Look at that separation for the jump shot behind the screen, a dribble drive, but more importantly, it collapses the defense for the kick out and the open three. The beauty of this offense is that while you can get layups at the rim, it also creates great spacing, and Georgetown shoots 38% behind the arc. When you defend them, you are picking your poison, and that's not an easy thing to do. College game day from Louisville this Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Good night, Bobby. Not so fast. Why the general will reemerge with a road win over Carolina. Is Duke the best in the country? Digger goes one-on-one -on -one with Rick Pitino. It's all coming up on college game day on Saturday. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Okay, accessibility. So you have an urgent package ready to go. Well, just drop it in UPS Dropbox. They're everywhere. Or log on to UPS.com and schedule a pickup. Or take it to your nearest UPS store. Or you can hand it to any UPS driver. 
and they can take it from you. It's not just accessibility. It's accessibility with UPS. Let's give them a bigger smile. Hey, Jack. I thought you were getting a Toyota Corolla. Well, I was. Then I found out this Mazda 3's got more interior room, more standard horsepower, and been getting some great reviews. I don't see why anyone would get a Corolla. Right now, get 1.9% APR financing on the 08 Mazda 3 4-door and 5-door. Discover a better way, the Zoom Zoom way. Hey, guys. Stand up. <clears throat> we, uh, we have a little announcement to make. We all, uh... He went to Jared. Oh, he went to Jared. He went to Jared. He went to Jared? He went to Jared? Jared has five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores with thousands of loose diamonds and hundreds of settings to create your own one-of-a-kind ring. He went to Jared. I know. He went to Jared. Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Everyone has a point of view. The president has been shot. There was something in that window. But the truth depends on your vantage point. We have to respond. You can't give the order. You've been shot. We risk telling the world that you weren't really there. We weren't there. There's something else going on here. The Americans think they've dodged a bullet. On February 22nd, oh my God, the clues are there. What did he say? But can you solve the puzzle? Where is he? Go! Go! Vantage Point, rated PG-13. When it's an insurance company, they call it Liberty Mutual. Responsibility. What's your policy? Liberty Mutual. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? NBA action takes center court on ABC. First, defending champ San Antonio Spurs visit the surging Boston Celtics and Paul Pierce. A possible NBA Finals preview. Then, Kobe Bryant's Lakers look to shine in Miami against Dwayne Wade in the Miami Heat. The NBA is back on ABC Sunday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, the home of the NBA Finals. UPS halftime report rolling on. Dari Noka, Fran Frischilla to the ACC. Clemson visiting bottom-dwelling Virginia. Cliff Hammonds for Clemson with a layup. Clemson up 11. Hammonds had 10 in the first half, and then Hammonds ahead to Casey Rivers, who had 16 in the first half. Clemson up 19. This is a big stretch. Six of the next eight for Clemson on the road. This will be a key game to get. And then Terrence Oglesby knocked down two first half threes, part of a 34-8 Clemson run. They're up 16. That's the new J.J. Redick in the ACC. <laughs> Do not forget, after West Virginia pit, Big Ten leading scorer Eric Gordon visits Champaign for the first time since decommitting from Illinois to attend arch rival Indiana. The Hoosiers and fighting Illini right after the Mountaineers and Panthers right here. Well, as well, until he comes back with an NBA exhibition game, it'll be the only time he plays in Champaign. He may get booed. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, he'll definitely get booed. <laughs> All right, what else is going on? Well, Roger Clemens and his accuser, Brian McNamee, both spent time today at Congress telling different stories about what actually happened when McNamee says that he injected Clemens with steroids. Also, Steve Spagnuolo, Giants defensive coordinator, not taking the Redskins gig. He's staying with the Giants, and according to Chris Mortensen, signing a new three-year deal. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Cisco. Welcome to the Human Network. And GMC, we are professional grade. The 2008 Sierra. We combined power, capability, and the most available V8 fuel efficiency of any full-size pickup. The only way to improve the Sierra is to back it with one of the best powertrain limited warranties in the business. The 2008 GMC Sierra. We examined everything, then stood behind it with the GM 100,000 mile warranty. GMC, we are professional grade. Somewhere 
in this town See me and the boys, we don't like it So we're getting up and going down Many sure things on the road to happiness, but there's one. Put your cash in an orange savings account from ING Direct, and it'll grow. The secret is, you got a pen? High interest. Tell your friends. Save your money. Fun can hit anytime once you've been to Dave & Buster's. Now eat and play with a $10 game card, only $15.99, or double your games for 8 bucks more. Fun like this stays with you. What you're about to see will change the way you look at weather. Presenting the revolutionary Rain-X Latitude Wiper Blades from the maker of Rain-X Original Glass Treatment. Many traditional wipers have six pressure points that can create uneven pressure, which can cause streaking. Rain-X Latitude Blades use a totally different technology, contouring to hug the windshield for greater visibility and virtually no streaking. So rain, or sleet, or snow get whisked away like never before. It's like weather never even happened. Get ultimate visibility with easy to install Rain-X Latitude Wiper Blades. Order two blades starting at $17.99 each and get the complete ultimate visibility pack for free. Rain-X, outsmart the elements. Showcase presented by T. Rowe Price as part of Rivalry Week presented by Cisco. Back in Pittsburgh, West Virginia leads the Panthers by one. Dave Pashlin, Elmore, Allen Hopkins, and funny, West Virginia didn't play very well. Got nothing out of Joe Alexander. One point from Alex Ruoff, yet they lead on the road and a very tough place to play. Well, a low-scoring game has to do with the lack of production. For Pittsburgh, Sam Young, only two points because of two quick fouls. But when you're West Virginia, you need Joe Alexander, you need Alex Ruoff to get themselves in the game. Bob Huggins, usually known for getting in the face of players, trying to get the best out of them, has another side to him, and this is coaching right now. Joe Alexander responds probably more to the softer side, demonstrating a little bit of confidence in the guy and telling him, hey, man, you can play. Let's just get it done. And I appreciate that from Bob Huggins. All too often, people think he's got that gruffness, and that's how he gets the most out of his players, but Bob Huggins knows how to coach. Let's see if it works. And when you're at these shoot arounds, which we get to attend, as Brown scores to start the half for Pittsburgh, you get to see that other side of Bob Huggins and the great relationship that he has with his players. And remember, he's only known these guys for less than a year. It's his first year on the job. But don't forget, that can change in a moment. A guy makes a silly mistake or doesn't do what he's capable of doing and Huggy will turn on you just enough to get you going. Darius Nichols with the basket. He's got seven. The leading scorer for West Virginia in the first half was Joe Missoula with eight points off the bench. Young gets the rebound after the Brown miss. Again, for Pittsburgh, Sam Young, their leading scorer, not productive either because of the foul trouble and had to sit on the bench. Really only got to play just seven minutes of that first half. Foul on Deshaun Butler is first. First on West Virginia in the half. The Mountaineers have won two straight on the road. Pittsburgh has lost just once at home, and that was against Rutgers, 77-64. Miss off the inbound and the rebound by Ruoff, who did not have an official field goal attempt in the first half. Meanwhile, Dewan Blair is now two out of ten for Pittsburgh. And you're not going to see that happen very often, but it just seems to be a lid on the basket. Blair is getting the looks. Ruoff, great pass to Small again, but he blew the layup. Got it back, though. And now Ruoff's first field goal try. Good, a three. Well, five of ten from beyond the arc for West Virginia. That's the reason why they have this lead. And if you think that they've changed their offensive focus, maybe a bit, but nevertheless, they're still willing to take those shots from outside. 
Ruoff second in the Big East at 44% from behind the arc. Benjamin unable to answer. Here comes Ruoff. Three on two for West Virginia. Nichols with the open look. Back to back. Mountaineer threes. And West Virginia has its largest lead of the game. Timeout Pittsburgh after Nichols buries a three. Ruoff starts it off with a triple and then Nichols and West Virginia on an 8-0 run leads by 7. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March. Oil. Energy. The environment. It is the story of our time and it leaves no one untouched. Because this is about you and me and the other six and a half billion people on this planet who need energy. So for today, the world needs oil. But what is also true is that we can provide it more intelligently, more efficiently, more respectfully, that we can practice and espouse conservation. Yes, we are an oil company, but right now we're also providing natural gas, solar, geothermal, because we live on this planet too. Not corporate titans, but people who daily try to find newer ways, cleaner ways to power the world. Imagine that, an oil company as part of the solution. This is the power of human energy. pulled from your life that's professional grade that's the acadia from gmc with the best in class interior space and better fuel efficiency than any eight passenger suv acadia is helping to redefine the category welcome to acadia the crossover from gmc get ready for an explosion of indescribably crunchy cheesy flavor The new crunchy cheesy crust pizza from Pizza Hut. Cheese baked right onto the crust for a crunch that unlocks a flavor shockwave. Try one now for just $11.99. And now get two free bottles of new G2 from Gatorade when you buy a crunchy cheesy crust pizza. Get more, not less. Pizza Hut. Order online. Back at Pitt, where West Virginia looks like the three-point shooting team from a year ago. Six of 11 from behind the arc tonight. Well, they've been able to move the ball very well. Again, catch in Pittsburgh again, rotation. And guys aren't hesitating. Now when you get Alex Ruoff in the mix, it makes them even more dangerous. Darius Nichols obviously been one of the keys offensively in the first half for West Virginia. So now you got a bunch of guys getting it going. And they're starting to play their game. And you have Troy Weaver there, top right, former Pitt assistant, NBA scout with a Jazz, Danny Need to his right, former Nebraska head coach. A lot of scouts, a lot of media on hand. But this is a great rivalry, pretty talented players. And of course, after what took place on the football field a few months ago when Pitt knocked off West Virginia, ending the Mountaineers' hopes of playing for a national title. Everybody started talking about the basketball rivalry. They'll play one more time this year on Big Monday at the end of the season down in Morgantown. Nice move on the baseline by Keith Benjamin to end an 8 to nothing West Virginia run. Well, we talked about Keith Benjamin again. Ten starts in the place of Mike Cook. And he has really come on strong. And Blair with his third steal and the foul by Smalligan. Third on him, second on West Virginia. You talked about how rare it is for a guy his size to have that many steals. Absolutely, but once you know he's got that ability, if you're Jamie Smalligan, you got to come and meet the ball. And I know that the West Virginia bench very upset with Smalligan's inability, and he's getting substituted for it right now. Pass comes to you. You know Dewan Blair is going to shoot the gap and meet the ball. Blair is fourth in the Big East in steals, and one of the reasons is that reach. He's six feet seven, but his wingspan makes him seven feet two. And it's also footwork, too. Quick feet for a guy his size gets him in position. Really a good freshman. Alexander gets called for the foul. He blocked the shot, 
of Gilbert Brown, but a foul called, and let's check it now with Allen Hopkins. Thanks, Dave. One of the things that Coach Jamie Dixon told me coming out of the locker room at halftime is he felt like they had to go to their bench early because of the foul trouble, particularly Sam Young. I asked him, how does he get them going? He said, offensively, we're getting good shots. We're just not able to knock them down, and that was something that he emphasized that last time out. Continue to get in position, but you got to convert the open baskets. He also felt in the first half defensively, he was happy with, the res with what they were doing, but overall, he feels like it's really going to come down to their execution the offensive end, making layups, which they've had plenty of. Blair missed one early, landing day. Yeah, Blair just two of ten from the field, and Young just one out of three, two points. And I could see where Jamie Dixon was happy with their first half defense. 27 points is what they limited West Virginia to, but when you only score 26, you know you're having trouble putting the ball in the basket. Missed by Smith. And a pit foul, it's first in the half. Saturday, ESPN dishes out two Big East games, first at noon. Marquette and Notre Dame score off on college basketball, presented by Altel Wireless. Then at 9 Eastern, Georgetown and Louisville, our Saturday primetime game, presented by Direct TV. And how about Notre Dame and what it's been able to do this year, especially at home, great home team. Notre Dame has won four in a row, and they're hot and coming home, and Marquette lost their last one. They've got to find a way to stay in that pack. Right now it's Georgetown and then Notre Dame closely at their heels. Huge game coming up Saturday. Georgetown 9-1, and one, Notre Dame in second place at 7-2. and two. UConn, winners of six in a row, and Louisville tied for third in the Big East at 7-3. and three. Shot clock at 10 for West Virginia. Alexander looking for his first field goal of the game is fouled by Blair. That's his second personal. And the second on Pittsburgh. Here in the half. Here are the uh, top half of the standings we were talking about. Pitt and West Virginia tied for sixth place. Well, you look at those seven teams right there, and we talked about Joe Lenardi, our bracketology expert, has eight teams in the Big East in. And I'm pretty sure that those are, the, those are at least seven of those eight. And what's happened to Villanova? Losers of five in a row, ranked just a few weeks ago, but now in trouble of not even getting to New York for the Big East tournament. It's the defense, and I'm sure Jay Wright would tell you right now, their inability to stop folks. Missed three by Ramon, rebounded by Butler. After Gilbert Brown picked up his third foul in the third and a half on Pittsburgh. Nichols. Can't get the roll. And then last touch by Pittsburgh. Mountaineers 15 and 1 when they lead at half. They're still up at Pittsburgh early second half. Rivalry Week presented by Cisco is hotter than ever. Freshman phenom Eric Gordon turned his back on Illinois and chose Indiana. Now the rivalry soars to new heights as the Illini welcome Gordon to town. Indiana, Illinois, tonight at 9 on ESPN. Inspiration pulled from your life. That's professional grade. That's the Acadia from GMC. With refined styling, available overhead sky views, and the smooth ride of a luxury sedan, Acadia is helping to redefine the category. Welcome to Acadia, the crossover from GMC. Are you sure this device is right for me? I don't have email. We can't track packages from the road. Email, Daddy, who said anything about email? Your phone is hot. Hot? I, I gotta go, sweetie. Teenage daughter, huh? Should try my guys. Need email solutions for your small business? Turn to the real experts, Verizon Wireless. For a limited time, get the BlackBerry Pearl for just $99.99 from America's most reliable wireless network. More coffee, princess? Verizon Wireless. Going back home is never easy. Gotcha. Uh, ah, freak! Martin Lawrence. Welcome home, Roscoe Jenkins. Rated PG-13 starts tomorrow. Hey, Bob. Yeah, we're expanding. We're going to need a lot more stuff. Um, let's start with servers. <laughs> OK. HP ProLiant, IBM, Sun. Oh, good. Uh, and networking. Cisco 3Com. Wow, is there anything you guys don't have? With over a 1,000 top technology brands to choose from, in stock and ready to ship, we're there. CDW. What do you think about getting some takeout after this?
DeJuan Blair with three steals, four points, six rebounds. Pittsburgh, though, trailing at home to West Virginia. I'm going to ask the most well-rounded man in America, Len Elmore, law degree, NBA player. What did DeJuan Blair and Andy Warhol have in common? Shenley well, High School, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You look at DeJuan Blair, he was one of those guys that loves his work, as did the late Andy Warhol. And big Mo Lucas won a championship in Portland in 76. Ray Brown. Sure you've heard him if you're a jazz buff. Bruno San Martino, I remember watching him when I was a little kid Saturday afternoon. He was the good guy in wrestling. And Professor Bell was at Harvard when I was there. I was there between 84 and 87, first African-American professor at the law school. A lot, of, a lot of luminaries coming out of Shenley High. And of course, Len Elmore did his undergrad at Maryland. He was an outstanding player. Congratulations to Maryland coach Gary Williams. Got a 600th win last night. Bob Huggins got his 600th win in December against Canisius. Looking to get one on the road at Pittsburgh. His team leads by three. A lot of time left. Over 15 minutes to go here at the peak where Pitt has lost once all season. No team has ever won twice in this building. West Virginia, one of nine schools to win here since Peterson Event Center opened six years ago. Well, again, Pittsburgh still hasn't found a rhythm offensively. A lot of it has to do with missing easy shots. That could be a start right there. We talked about Keith Benjamin giving them an offensive lift since he became a starter due to the injury to Mike Cook. He's from Mount Vernon, New York. There have been some pretty good guys to come out of there. Ben Gordon, the McCray boys, Scooter and Rodney. Benjamin, a senior, getting an opportunity to start. You get a lot of minutes with the injury still of Vance Fields and Mike Cook. Alan Hawkins told you in the first half that Fields is coming along and expects to be back in a couple of weeks, perhaps, for Pittsburgh. Shot clock down to five. Missoula off the mark that time. Look at that quickness. And he finds Benjamin with a nice pass. And there for the rebound as well. And the putback. Nice pass by Blair. And short shot to turn into a nice pass to Blair. Eight straight Panther points. They're back up one. After West Virginia started the half on an eight to nothing run. Alexander finally on the board and it's a three his first points and the seventh triple for the Mountaineers tonight bit of irony Joe Alexander with probably more of a quickness advantage with the ability to get inside but you see the comfort level he has beyond the arc sometimes you just got to go with your strengths you know that you have an advantage but where you feel most comfortable is where you'll be most productive Tenth lead change in the 174th backyard brawl. West Virginia and Pittsburgh separated by only about an hour and a half. Down Interstate 79. Benjamin No rebounded by Wellington Smith. And Benjamin lost that ball. If we get a chance, we'll see. He's got a cut between his pinky and his ring finger that has really bothered him. Took eight stitches and it kept opening up and still has difficulty grasping the ball, even though they've done a better job in. in kind of taping it up a little bit and that's affected his scoring over the last couple of games Alexander couldn't hit two in a row and then a West Virginia foul fourth team foul on Mountaineers well you take a look at Juan Blair and I talked about the quickness for a guy his size he gets it slapped away but still quick enough to get it up the floor and then he follows he gets good position on the short shot by Benjamin to get the put back and he's one of those guys I affectionately call a dancing bear. He's got that size, but he's got those quick feet, very nimble. It just makes it so tough. And as you mentioned before, with that reach, makes him play a lot bigger than 6'7". Nice steal by Thurlman, but he missed the layup. Alexander, though, doesn't miss the follow. West Virginia by four. Well, that was good hustle by West Virginia that time. They beat. The white shirts down the floor. One thing Bob Huggins can't argue with with his team. They may not be knocking shots down, but he'll never argue with the effort. Alexander scored the last five West Virginia points. Sam Young from outside a three. Only a second made field goal of the night. And when you're not scoring, if you're Pittsburgh, 
you need your leading scorer to kind of come alive a little bit. Young throttled by the foul trouble in the first half. Alexander, beautiful move on the baseline, but he couldn't finish. And Gilbert Brown, one on four now. And a blocking foul is called on Nichols. That's his second personal and the fifth on West Virginia. Well, West Virginia, again, we talked about putting forth effort. Take a look there on the steal and the push. And the follow by Alexander. That's hustle, folks. You can't have Valentine's Day without chocolate. Chocolate makes you feel good. It's a real girl thing. Women love chocolate. They just go together. I mean, happen. <laughs> Don't give her just any chocolates. Give her Russell Stover chocolates with the famous Russell Stover bow. Like Zoinks, it's the cable guy. Well, now that DirecTV has way more HD channels than cable, he had to try to stop everyone from switching to DirecTV. <laughs> Get over 90 of the best channels in HD now on DirecTV. ESPN, your NBA destination. The Celtics continue to dominate, maintaining their lock on the league's best record. Oh. Damn, Tomorrow, Ray Allen and Paul Pierce lead Boston against the Timberwolves. Then, the Wizards hit the road for a mile-high showdown with All-Stars Allen Iverson, Carmelo Anthony, and the Nuggets. NBA Friday Night Doubleheader, Celtics Timberwolves and Wizards Nuggets. Coverage begins tomorrow at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Harp Home Services. It's the one name you need to know for your home appliance service needs. For major appliance repair from the kitchen to the laundry, call Harp Home Services. For heating and cooling repair and installation, call Harp Home Services. For guaranteed service within 24 hours, call Harp Home Services. It's easy to make an appointment online at harplink.com. And don't forget to ask about Harp's maintenance contracts. Mention this TV ad for up to 20% off repairs and installation. Harp Home Services. Help is on the way. Just call Harp Home Services today. When old enemies return. The last time Voldemort gained power, he almost destroyed everything we hold dear. And look at me. A new order is born. We need someone to teach us how to defend ourselves. And the fate of their world will be decided. You're weak. I'm not weak. Then you prove it. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Fios TV On Demand brings you thousands of the hottest shows and movies anytime you want. Dari Note in studio, 21.8 points a game. That's tops in the Big Ten, and it's Eric Gordon, a previous Illinois commit, moves to Indiana. Look out, he visits Champaign, tip time, 907 is All right, look forward to that, Dari. Right now, West Virginia leading Pittsburgh by one after Sam Young hit a big three before the timeout. And with more on Sam Young, here's our Alan Hopkins. Thanks, Dave. Sam Young having a tough night, but adversity is something that he's used to fighting through. You see, his brother, his younger brother, Michael Spriggs, who's 18 years of age, provides him inspiration. His younger brother, Michael, is blind. He's been blind since the age of 13, but that has not stopped him at all. In fact, the 18-year-old Spriggs is a wrestler, and in fact, this past summer, won gold in judo at the International Blind Sports Federation World Youth Championships in Colorado Springs. He also plays the piano, and the two that they, the two bond that the two share is one that they will share for a lifetime as they both inspire each other. So even though on a night where Sam Young is struggling, Dave, you know that his brother is providing that inspiration to get him over the hump. Athletic family, Sam, also a gymnast, Allen, and writes poetry. In fact, you know how a lot of guys will listen to rap music before games, Len? I know that's what you did, but... Uh, he doesn't listen to run DMC like you did Len. He'll, he'll read his poem out loud to get himself fired up for the game. By the way, I think I could work up a collection from the guys in the truck to find enough to get you out there to challenge Sam Young's brother in a judo contest. What do you think? I don't think so. <laughs> I know how important leverage is, but I'm not messing around with the martial arts. <laughs> Alexander off the dribble. He's come alive here in the second half, and he draws a foul. And do you think, again, if Joe Alexander coming alive, that that little talking to, little show of confidence in him by Bob Huggins certainly had something to do with it. Fourth Pittsburgh foul. And Alexander, an 82% free throw shooter, will shoot two. Benjamin comes back into the game for Pittsburgh. 
Nothing in the first half for Alexander, but as mentioned, starting to get going here, but he missed both free throws. Meanwhile, Gilbert Brown now has four personal fouls for the Panthers. That's why he went to the bench and Benjamin came back in. Midway through the second half. This game tied at 40 in the backyard brawl. West Virginia has lost three in a row to Pittsburgh in this series. And the crowd wanted Benjamin to shoot that. He's second in conference games in three-point shooting. Passed it up, though, and then turned it over as Missoula steps in to pick off the pass. Nice job by West Virginia getting their defense set and surrounding Keith Benjamin. Missoula, nice feed by Alexander. And West Virginia back on top. Ten points now for Missoula. Timeout called by Jamie Dixon as Dewan Blair is going to come in. Only six points for Blair on three of 11 shooting, though they need him to get going. Well, you're going to see it's just pretty simple. Cut down in a curl by Missoula, and Biggs just falls asleep. And Dewan Blair recognizes if he was in Terrell Biggs's position, he might have been more awake on that curl. Rivalry week concludes with a doubleheader on ESPN Monday night. First at 7 Eastern. Number six, Georgetown takes on Villanova. Georgetown's only loss at Biggie's play here at Pittsburgh. Then at 9 Eastern, number five, Kansas, and 12th ranked Texas. Big Monday presented by Bud Light, part of Rivalry Week presented by Cisco. So you have Kansas losing to Kansas State. You have Duke winning at North Carolina. Memphis still undefeated. Memphis the best team in the country right now, Les? Well, if you're talking from a subjective standpoint, I think right now Duke is playing better than anyone. You know, Duke has shown that they can be dominant. They might have their little letdowns against Maryland for a half, even a half against North Carolina State, but they pour it on, particularly in the second half. And they pretty much dominated Carolina, although a weakened Carolina without Ty Lawson. They're an absolutely different team. But take nothing away from the Blue Devils. They're able to play their game, impose their will. And I think right now they're playing better than anyone, although Memphis deservedly is number one because they haven't been beaten. Only one loss for Duke. That was against Pittsburgh as Benjamin is called for an offensive foul. His second personal is a fifth on the Panthers here in the half. Both teams with five fouls. You see the timeouts represented by those yellow dashes. Only two remaining for Pittsburgh, four for West Virginia. You talk about Pittsburgh beating Duke. Obviously earlier in the year and some of the younger players from Duke hadn't really gelled yet, but Pittsburgh had the formula. It had some pretty good shooters, ability to take it off the bounce, a terrific point guard in the Vance Fields, and a big man capable of dominating in the middle. Now that's an awful lot. Not too many teams in the country have that, so it's going to be hard to defeat Duke down the stretch unless you can put it all together. Nichols with a missed three. Ramon can't hit a three on the other end. West Virginia ball with a two-point lead. Pittsburgh knocked off West Virginia in football to end West Virginia's shot at a national title. Mountaineer is trying to return the favor, although I don't know if even a, a sweep of the regular season series in basketball would make up for that loss in football. As there's a Pittsburgh foul, another one on Benjamin. That's his third and the sixth now on the Panthers. And in case you've forgotten the score, the Oakland Zoo <laughs> behind us, the Pittsburgh students strategically flashed it, 13-9. In fact, there's a student who said he printed up like a thousand copies and he wanted nice. to make sure he got credit for it too. He told, <laughs> every time we pass him, he says, I, I did that. <laughs> Parents education money. Being put to good use. Here's Missoula. Finds Alexander. Short with a shot. Young had it stripped by Thurman. And Blair with a nice save. Again, the agility of Juan Blair helped pick key possession. Wanamaker hit a big three in the first half. A two that time to tie it at 42. And it was Blair's defensive play that started that sequence. See Pittsburgh on the cross of the ball or high screen likes to give that hard hedge by the big man and they do a good job of not letting the ball handler split and forcing them wide. Missoula for three, his third of the game. Go 
Missoula with 13 points to lead all Mountaineer scorers tonight. Solid ball movement. Once again, 16 assists a game for West Virginia. So unselfish, always looking for the open guy. Ramon on the baseline. Back up top. Down low again. Biggs, no. And Big, West Virginia ball. Biggs actually turned the wrong way. The defender was on the side he went to shoot. Step to the middle and turn and square up. He had a wide open look. Thurman with the ball getting a lot of minutes tonight played in only eight games this season played 21 minutes in a key role in a victory at Providence. But sometimes you need guys out there who understand their roles kind of glue guys pass the ball scrap on the board for rebounds have the ability to hit an open shot now and then to keep the defense on it. But more than not willing to move the ball and make sure the open guy gets found. Young's three is good to tie it at 45. Van Fields expected back in a couple weeks, Len. Wishes he could be out there, but rooting on Young and his teammates right now. Well, Sam Young heating up, and that was the problem Pittsburgh had in the first half. Inability to get scorers on the floor capable of knocking the ball down in regularity. Wanamaker can't believe that he was just called for a foul his first and the sixth on pitch. Well, we were offense challenged in the first half, partly because of defense and partly because people were cold. But Joe Mazzillo on one end, Sam Young on the other. Both of these teams now are starting to find some offensive rhythm. Disciplined investing. It isn't about star fund managers. At zero price, it's about experienced investment teams that stay the course. For each three, five, and 10 year period, over 70% of our mutual funds beat their Lipper average. Low cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. Pro Shops has the latest gear at the lowest price guaranteed. And for a limited time, you can get a gift card worth up to $1,000 with select 2008 Tracker and Nitro boats. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by T. Rowe Price, providing investment management excellence for over 70 years. Invest with confidence. And in part by CareerBuilder.com. Start building CareerBuilder.com. And Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Don't forget, coming up next, D.J. White and his Indiana Hoosiers visit Champaign and the University of Illinois. Tip time just after 9 o'clock Eastern time. That's coming up next after West Virginia and Pitt. Guys? All right, Dari, looking forward to that. This ESPN College Basketball presentation brought to you in high definition by Olivia HD. Take a look at tonight's Cisco game track. Tied at 45 in the second half. West Virginia shooting better from three than it is from two-point land. Again, not surprising. This is a textbook from the B-line era. And as I mentioned, Bob Huggins doing the smart thing and gradually trying to institute his system, which doesn't necessarily negate the three-point shot. A little more focus on, on playing a power game. But, he, you know, he looks at his personnel and he's doing what he needs to do with that personnel. Butler can't hit the first free throw. West Virginia 5 of 11 from the line. Bob Huggins has been here before. In a game earlier this season against Marshall, they were 11 of 28 from the line. They won that game, but the Georgetown game, we were there. They lost at the buzzer on a Ewing block, and they were 12 of 23 in that game at the line. Now 
There's five of 12 at the strike. And in that Georgetown game, obviously, what a lot of people, at least, at least Mountaineer fans, consider a controversial call. Bob Huggins, to his credit, one, he obviously criticized the call, which you expect him to do, but in the end, it was the goaltending call. But in the end, he recognized they shouldn't have been in that position because of the missed free throws. Benjamin's three, no. Blair there with an offensive rebound. He's one of the Big East leaders in that category. And a West Virginia foul in sixth. And here's that West Virginia Georgetown finish. Jesse Sapp with the three. Huge shot by Sapp. Georgetown up one. Butler on the drive, the block by Ewing. That was a ruling, a block. And you know what, Dave? We saw the replay several times before you could even tell if there was a, a perceptible dip in the ball or allow it to be called goaltending. And then when the officials have to do a bang bang call, it's so difficult for them to make that call. I talked to Hank Nichols, uh, supervisor of officials for the NCAA, and he even said, you know, you call what you see, and if you didn't see it, it's a good call, not the call. If you understand what I mean. I do. Alan Hopkins does as well. Alan? Well, the one thing that Dave, that Huggins told us today, it wasn't so much about the shot being goaltended or not being goaltended. It was the foul that wasn't called before. He felt like Butler was pushed and almost driven out of bounds before all that. So it wasn't so much the shot, and whether it was goaltending or not, but it was the play leading up to that. But again, like Glenn, you just mentioned, he said they should have never been in that position when it was all said and done. Yeah, you don't want to leave it in the hands of the official down the stretch on the last possession. Just like in baseball, you never want to give the umpire the power on the third strike call. Sam Young now in double figures with 10. And Pittsburgh, which trailed by three a couple of minutes ago, back up three, nearing the five-minute mark here in the second half. Pittsburgh has lost just once at home all season. West Virginia's won two straight games on the road. Thurman from just inside the arc. And pulled down by Biggs. Now's the time again when you got to start thinking, yes, Thurman was wide open for that shot, but you got to start getting the ball to the guys who can make that shot. Blair with a double pump, couldn't hit it, but Biggs playing a big role tonight was fouled by Nichols. That's his third and the seventh on West Virginia. Jamie Dixon going to his bench, didn't have a lot. A lot of players to go to, only nine healthy scholarship players and four guards. Ronald Ramon is one of them, with Mike Cook out for the year with an injury and LeVan's Fields out until perhaps the end of the month. There's LeVance, fractured his left foot at the end of December against Dayton, but expected to be back before the end of the regular season. And he is really the leader of this pit basketball team. They've done well without him at five and four in the Big East coming into tonight. And he is raring to go. Had a chance to speak with him on his way to lunch today after their shoot around. And he was just so happy he didn't need the crutches anymore. He could put weight on and he can start walking in that boot. You'd have to think, Len, you know, this Pittsburgh team given wins against Georgetown at home and Duke on a neutral floor. Granted, they won't have cooked this season, but when they get fields back, if they can get into the NCAA tournament, if they can hold serve at home, maybe get a couple games on the road, get into the tournament, could be a dangerous team, right? Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to readjust to get Fields back in the game. There's Mike Cook right there. Senior, unfortunately, not eligible for a red shirt. And so his career is over. Tough way to go out, but Mike Cook has given an awful lot of terrific service to his university as a basketball player. but. LeVance Fields, again, his ability to beat ball pressure, his ability to apply ball pressure, his ability to get in, penetrate, create for guys, make them better, and also the ability to hit big shots. All things that every team needs, but certainly this Pittsburgh team rallies around. Dewan Blair commits his third foul, 18 foul. Both free throws go for Alexander. LeVance Fields can only watch his team 
Leading now by one after Alexander's free throws and with more on field story, here's Allen. Yeah, an upbeat Levance Fields told me before the game that he certainly is expecting to come back. He thinks the Louisville game here at home on the 24th of this month will be the game he comes back. The foot is healing just as the doctors hope. He had an x-ray today. They're very happy with the process. In fact, he was wearing a bone stimulator when I talked to him in the athletic training room. So he's feeling like he's just about ready to start the next phase of his rehab, which will include some stationary shooting and some light jogging. But the one thing that's helped him throughout this whole process is Mike Cook. His roommate is also injured. And those two are really fortifying each other, trying to keep each other positive. Obviously, Levant's feeling a lot better about his situation than Mike the senior. But Mike Cook told me just before tip-off, he said, this is only my second game back, but the guys need me. They need to see me here to let them know how much I still want to be a part of this team. Yeah, and Mike Cook, he was one of those guys who's a slasher, could shoot a bit from the perimeter, but just a leader on the floor, and especially among the young guys. And as I said, this is a shame, a quality player had to go out like that. Who's the go-to guy for Pitt down the stretch without those guys? Blair is just three of 12, seven points, but is he still the man if you're Jamie Dixon? Well, I'm looking at Sam Young right now. Sam Young has demonstrated he can get it done all year. And we've talked about it before, candidate for most improved player in the Big East. And even in my mind, you can possibly mention him in the sentence about player of the year. Third in the conference in scoring, 21 out of 22 games in double figures, 19.6 rebounds over the last five. I'd look at him. The officials are looking at the monitor right now, and when we get an update as to what exactly they're looking at, we'll we'll tell you what's going on. In the meantime, though, we'll look at Sam Young. <laughs> and they're looking at Blair here. They called him for the foul, his third. Alexander like he's got shot him the free the throws, and they were trying to see if it indeed was Alexander that was the man shooting, and they're saying, no, it, it wasn't Alexander that was supposed to be shooting, so they're going to take the points off the board and reshoot the free throws because it was not Alexander who was the man fouled. And that's one of those situations where the officials are allowed to go and correct that mistake using the video camera, video monitor. It was Thurlman who was the man that was fouled, but really hard to tell from that replay. And if it was Thurlman, heck, it was Thurlman who was grabbing on to one Blair. So take the free throws off the board. Let's see here again. See, look at Thurlman's got Blair hooked. And it looked as though Alexander was over Blair's back. <laughs> I don't know. And if I'm Bob Huggins, I'm just happy that one of my guys is on the line instead of the other way around, which appeared to be the case. Problem is Thurlman missed the front end of the one and one. That's only his third attempt all season. And Joe Alexander, an 82% free throw shooter, just made two. But it's a three-point pit lead inside of five minutes to go. 174th meeting in the backyard brawl between Pittsburgh and West Virginia. It has won three straight in the series, looking to make it four in a row. Wanamaker having himself perhaps the best game of his young career. The freshman from Philly now with seven points off the bench, and he has not missed from the field. That'll make Huggins go to his bench. After the defensive mistake, letting Wanamaker get to the basket. And a timeout call by Bob Huggins, who's letting Joe Alexander have it. And I mentioned it before. On one hand, he gave Joe Alexander some love at the beginning of the second half. And if you're not getting it done, you're not putting forth the effort, he's going to turn on you. Eight to nothing run over the last four minutes by Pittsburgh. Beginning of the first half, Bob Huggins is stroking. Joe Alexander telling him he's got confidence in him knowing that he can play and he can play better and now turned on him a little bit sometimes you get a stroke sometimes you get spanked it was another guy that we saw that do and do that a lot over the course of his career Bob Knight who just announced the other day that uh, he is resigning obviously Pat Knight coach last night as Texas Tech lost I talked with Bob Huggins about that today he said that you know, he was in the Big 12 last year, got a chance to talk with Bob Knight, and Knight told him last year that he was tired then, and, and Knight gave that as a reason for why he left Texas Tech this time. What are your thoughts, Lennon, 
the timing of Bob Knight's decision. Well, you know, I have a problem with people who are criticizing him for quitting on his players. I mean, this program has continuity. Pat is an extension of his dad, may have a different way of doing it, but Pat has been so intimately involved, it was almost like both of them are coaching. Yeah, Bob Knight stands out because he is the icon that he is. But nevertheless, if Bob Knight steps down, Pat Knight takes over, you still got an extension of Bob Knight, his philosophy, his abilities to some extent. But if the rumors are true that Bob Knight will coach again someplace else, then I might have a problem with it. If he's tired and he's tired of coaching, let him go off into the sunset. Ball on Ramon, his second. Bob Huggins' team down five, and Alexander's on the bench. It's easy to feel like you're on the same team when you stay at Sheraton. Starwood Preferred Guests earn star points regardless of what team they root for, so everybody wins. On DVD February 12th, two brothers. All the places, you gotta come to my place. One war. Sooner or later, either you're gonna be with us or you're gonna be with the dealers. We Own the Night is terrific. A top-notch thriller. We Own the Night on DVD Blu-ray High Def February 12th. The road to happiness is not paved with bank fees. It's not. That's why the Orange Savings account from ING Direct doesn't have any. No fees, no minimums, lots of interest. That's freedom, baby. Save your money. I couldn't find a card that truly encompass the depth of my feelings, so uh, I made one by hand. Because you're not that guy, there's Hellsberg Diamonds, where it's easier than you think to give her the perfect gift. Hellsberg Diamonds, helping regular guys since 1915. Gentlemen, start your engines! Let's go get them. Good luck. Nationwide Series on ESPN2 Classic Racing Action. Coverage begins next Saturday at noon with the Camping World 300 at Daytona. Eric Gordon was destined to be a headline act at Illinois. The Hoosier sensational freshman and one-time Illinois commitment makes his champagne debut in front of the fans he once spurned. Indiana and Illinois coming up in just a bit, Dave. Race added spice to that rivalry, and this is the 174th backyard brawl here in Pittsburgh. West Virginia led by one at the half. Bob Huggins' team down five now in the second half. And he's had his top two scorers, Joe Alexander and Alex Ruoff, on the bench, Len, for a good part of this game. Well, combined, they are two for 12, Ruoff being one for one from the field, and Joe Alexander, two of 11. Alexander involved in the offense, not able to knock shots down, and Alex Ruoff, for some reason, just hesitant to get shots and take shots. Another missed free throw for West Virginia. Bob Huggins cannot look. Five of 14 now at the line. We mentioned that. This free throws blew the Georgetown game and almost cost him against Marshall. They ended up winning that game despite missing 17 free throws. The second one goes, though, for Nichols, a 75% foul shooter. West Virginia, 8 of 17 from three, but 6 of 14 from the foul line. Here's Wanamaker. Rick that one. He had not missed prior to that shot. Here's Missoula. And the offensive story tonight for West Virginia with 13 points to lead the Mountaineers. Nichols on the drive. The floater no. 
Thurman kept it alive. Great job by Richard freshman Cam Thurman. And that's what I mean by those chemistry guys. Guys who just get in, understand their roles, keep balls alive, make sure they move the ball well, and that gives West Virginia another opportunity. Hustle points for Cam Thurman. And Missoula with 26 points in his last two games. And West Virginia's first field goal in five minutes. Missoula's missed only once tonight. West Virginia down two with three minutes to go. Entry pass to Blair and a foul before the shot. 18 foul on West Virginia, so one and one coming up for a 64% free throw shooter in Dewan Blair. And even though he didn't get the shot, look how quick he makes that turn. Feels Thurman, steal, and boom. This is a quick move to the basket, hoping that he was going to draw the three-point opportunity. And this is a freshman, folks. I mean, he's subpar today offensively from the field. He's missed an awful lot of shots. But in the end, you see the savvy there that's way beyond his years. Averaging 12 points per game. The freshman record at Pitt is held by Charles Smith. They average 15 points per game as a frosh. A guy that played with Charles Smith, Darrell Porter, was the last Pittsburgh City League player to play at Pitt until Dewan Blair, who misses that free throw. Pittsburgh 10 of 16 at the line West Virginia 6 out of 15 and here's what Pitt thrives on playing solid half court defense and that's kept them in a lot of games and as I said earlier it's really helped them weather the storm caused by the injuries to key players Nichols banks it in to give West Virginia a one point lead and there is no defense for a shot like that. <laughs> and six straight for the Mountaineers forces Jamie Dixon to call for time. One remaining now for the Panthers. Sometimes it pays to be lucky instead of good. And Darius Nichols, terrific player who's done an awful lot for his team over the last several games, hits that big one right there. And as I said, there's no defense for that. You look at Ramon right in his face. Yet Nichols gets enough arc on the ball where it finds the window. 12th lead change in this 174th meeting between Pittsburgh and West Virginia. Coming up Saturday, two more good Big East games, starting with Marquette and Notre Dame. College basketball presented by Alltel Wireless. Then our Saturday primetime game presented by DirecTV. Louisville hosts Georgetown. Only one blemish on the Big East mark for Georgetown that came here in Pittsburgh. Can the Cardinals take down the Hoyas and keep their hopes of a Big East regular season title alive? And remember, Georgetown, Louisville, those are the two teams picked in a tie to finish first preseason in the Big East. Louisville suffered through some injuries early in the season, started to get everybody back and everybody playing almost up to their capabilities. Kind of went on a tear for a little bit. Pittsburgh was picked to finish in the middle of the pack. West Virginia preseason 10th, and Jamie Dixon on more than one occasion said, I did not vote West Virginia 10th. He thought they were going to be a lot better. As Wellington Smith rises for the block, and it goes to West Virginia. Big mistake made by Dewan Blair. I talked about his savvy beyond his years, but every once in a while, that freshman inexperience shows. Watch him go after this ball with one hand. First of all, the defensive play. Nice block by Smith. Now watch Blair go with one hand. You've got to go get yourself in position, go with two hands. That's why he lost it. All too often, big men are trying to catch the ball with one hand, trying to recover with one hand. Two hands is the most fundamentally sound way to go after it. Joe Alexander, just five points, two of 11 shooting back into the game. Alex Ruoff back in. Ruoff, their second leading scorer on the season has taken just one shot he made it Alexander the leading scorer this season for West Virginia Nichols off the dribble he's been the star for the Mountaineers over their last four games and it continues tonight again Darius Nichols you can't say enough about him picking up his team putting him on his back 19 points a game the last three games for a team that's had trouble scoring and he's been a constant in a series of ups and downs for West Virginia. Eight straight points for West Virginia since they took those two free throws off the board because they had the wrong foul shooter for West Virginia. 
Again, who is going to be the guy to put it in the basket for Jamie Dixon's team down the stretch? Well, the last possession was Sam Young looking to go to the basket. But it's really about distributing the ball. You got good inside out combinations there. Ramon with Blair, Young with Blair, whoever sets up on his side. Young with 10 points, the only Panther in double figures. Nice. What a pass by Blair and Benjamin with the flush. And there you use one hand with the touch pass. That ends an eight to nothing West Virginia run. The Panthers back within a point here at home. No team has ever won twice at the Peterson Event Center. West Virginia called timeout. It is only 47 seconds away from doing so. The Mountaineers, one of only nine teams to win in this building, which was open six years ago. We're going to take a look here at how this play is set up and the recognition by Dewan Blair. You see Joe Mazzilla right here trying to front guard him, face guard him, and the defender, Wellington Smith, trying to help as well. Blair recognizes that, and so does Benjamin, a little eye contact. And again, this is, this is the part where he's savvy beyond his years. Just an excellent heads-up play by both Blair and Keith Benjamin. Look at Smith come over trying to steal, and that was the mistake made, leaving the inbound passer free. And all too often, when you inbound the ball that's used in a passer that ultimately gets free, Juan Blair found him. Was that a design play for the one hand? I'm not so sure that that was a design play. I think that was the focus. You never anticipate the defenders leaving the inbounder. I just think that at that point in time, yeah, putting it up for one hand was a target, but the actual touch pass back to Benjamin was a spur in a moment thing. That was just basketball IQ. No surprise we've had that many lead changes and ties in this great rivalry. 174th meeting, the backyard brawl. West Virginia leading by one with the basketball. Here's Ruoff, who's only taken one shot in the game, and the timer's at five. Nichols hit the big shot last time down. Can't do it this time. And it's rebounded by Pittsburgh. Benjamin gets out of there. 18 seconds to go. Here's Brown. Finds Blair. Can't score. Smith with a rebound. West Virginia ball. Pittsburgh's got a foul. And Blair does with 9.5 on the clock. And even if Ruoff makes these free throws, Pittsburgh does have a timeout and plenty of time on the clock. Well, they got a good look at the basket, giving it to the best inside scorer. But Blair probably would have been better served just going up strong. This time he just loses sight of the backboard, never really gets it. And how about Wellington Smith falling down, keeps his dribble, so not to be called for a travel. West Virginia is 6 of 15 as a team tonight at the free throw line. That's the 10th hit foul. So two free throws wow. for Ruoff. He missed wow. the first one. In Big East play, Ruoff is shooting 92%, but he's missed two tonight at the line. Each team with a timeout remaining. Two-point game with 9.5 on the clock. Jamie Dixon signaled to his guys, let's get it in bounds, call a timeout. We get to half court. They obviously want a quick hitter so as not to take too much time. And only one second off the clock, and they get it in the front court. Final timeout for Pittsburgh. West Virginia by two. All right, Lenny, what's Jamie Dixon drawing up right now for his basketball team down two? Well, I think they're going to try to run something where they have options. They have Dewan Blair down low. They'll have to have a shooter on his side so they can avoid the double team. Um, if that breaks down, you've got guys who can beat you off the bounce, particularly Keith Benjamin, try to get the ball back to the top so that there's no help side, and you got to let him take it. You only have 8.1 seconds, so you got an opportunity to, to really explore two Two options. The first would be to try to get something on the side of Blair and the shooter, maybe exploit him inside, and if there's a double, to kick it back outside for a shot. And if you don't have that, you got to get it back to the top for a breakdown guy like a Benjamin, and he's going to have to make it work. And this is really a situation where you'd love to have a healthy LeVance Fields, who's still out with that foot injury. 
Yeah, LeVance Fields, uh, again, a guy with ice water in his veins. We saw that in the Duke game. An ability to beat you off the dribble, hit the shot. You know, Pittsburgh can take a chance if it's a good shot, go inside out or penetrate and kick for a three. But more importantly, you got to put the ball in the basket two or three. Along with Len Elmore and Alan Hopkins, I'm Dave Pash. The backyard brawl part of Rivalry Week presented by Cisco. Only 75 miles separate these schools. They played a great football game on December 1st in Morgantown when Pitt ended West Virginia's hopes of a national title. Great basketball game tonight. First of two meetings. The next one will come on Big Monday in March down in Morgantown. Pittsburgh with the ball down two. No timeouts remaining for the Panthers. Here's Ramon. High screen. A lot of people have trouble guarding him. Three seconds to go. Benjamin. Ramon for the win. Got oh. it. Pittsburgh wins. 55-54. The officials are looking at the monitor to make sure sure that Ramon got rid of it before the, the buzzer sounded. Only the second made shot for Ramon all night and it's the game winner. But again the players have to remain on the floor. The officials say he did get it off. It's good. It's a final. Pittsburgh wins. And again, we got it part right. Look at Keith Benjamin, the breakdown artist, draws the defenders, penetrating kick. And again, you had two options. You could have gone for the two to tie. Benjamin obviously doubled right there. And this is where you got to rely on your best perimeter shooter. Take a look at that exhilaration right there. LeVance Fields. Hey, he's not hurt. Yeah, foot looks pretty good there. <laughs> Allen Hopkins standing by with Ronald Ramon. Well, you waited to the last second, Ronald, and what was your th thinking when you're taking up that shot? Ah, uh, man. You know, it was, it was a close game. I knew it was going to come down to an open shot. Keith made a great pass. He penetrated and trying to find an open guy. Congratulations. Big win for you guys. Back to you, Dave. You. Pittsburgh wins at home 55 54. It's fourth straight win over West Virginia. Great finish here in Pittsburgh at the Peterson Event Center. For Len Elmore, Allen Hopkins, I'm Dave Pash. Indiana, Illinois up next. Reese Davis, Jay Billis, top this. The champagne wishes had Eric Gordon dreams, but a change of heart in the orange brush still seeing red over the man who dines crimson for Indiana tonight. Showcase presented by T. Rowe Price, which is part of Rivalry Week presented by Cisco tonight in Assembly Hall in Champaign, Indiana and Illinois. And just a few moments ago, a man who needed no introduction to this Fighting Illini crowd got one anyway, Eric Gordon of Indiana. For Indiana at guard, a 6'4 freshman from Indianapolis, Indiana, number 23, Eric Gordon putting in a mouthpiece. Earplugs might work well tonight in Champaign. Reese Davis along with Jay Billis. A great rivalry between the Fighting Illini and the Hoosiers and one that will be stoked 
by this high-scoring freshman, a one-time Illinois commitment who changed his mind and went to Indiana. What are the storylines, Jay? How will he handle this atmosphere tonight? Well, when they played at Assembly Hall in Bloomington, he didn't handle it particularly well. Still had 17 points, but it wasn't his best game. And this is the kind of treatment that stars get. And Eric Gordon is a star. He's got to handle it because he and D.J. White are the keys to beating Indiana. Those two score 60% of the Hoosiers' points, and he's going to see a lot of defensive attention, especially coming off screens all night long. And Gordon, number one in the Big Ten, is scoring in the top 15 in the country, part of the Star Watch tonight. Well, Gordon is an explosive scorer. And then for the Illini, Sean Pruitt, the big lefty inside. He had 18 points against Purdue. He is always looking to go back to that left hand. He gave the starting lineups, Gordon and D.J. White, one and two in the Big Ten in scoring. They lead the Indiana attack. Bassett, Ellis, and Stem were the other starters for Illinois. A bit of a change. Dimitri McCamey, the freshman, getting the start for Bruce Weber. You see the rest of the starting lineup. Pat Forty's with us tonight. Pat, great atmosphere in here. Uh, Reese, there's animosity in the air at Assembly Hall. There are Illinois students camped out last night in sub-freezing temperatures to be the first ones through the door to heckle Eric Gordon. Dan Dockett, the assistant coach for Indiana, told Gordon, hey, you know what? If you're going to let some kid in an orange shirt who's an engineering student from Wilmette bother you, you're not as tough as I thought you were. We're going to see who's tougher, Eric Gordon or the Orange Crush. have the acid tongue from time to time, Jay. Well, you have to be careful not to misjudge the toughness of people from Will Met. They'll take it to you. Randall and DJ White jumping control by Illinois. And Dimitri McCamey has it in the front court, the first possession of the night for the Illini. And right away, Indiana goes man-to-man -man off the pin downs. This is not a high-scoring Illinois team, so they have to take advantage of opportunities, especially when they get offensive rebound opportunities. The double team when it goes into Pruitt. Here is the best outside shooter for the Illini, Trent Meacham, missing his first three-point attempt of the night. And Jamarcus Ellis grabs the rebound for the Hoosiers. Gordon touches it for the first time. D.J. White working on the inside and working on the double team. White had to give it up. Both teams going with double teams on the primary interior scores. It looked like when White put it on the deck, that's when Illinois came with the double. Ellis to D.J. White. White. And the Hoosiers on the board. White. Getting his first bucket on a jump shot. And Marcus Ellis is such a versatile player. When he puts the ball on the deck, he's a very good passer, also an outstanding rebounder. Now off the make, Indiana going to a 2-3 zone. Not a great shooting team, but they have to know where Trent Meacham is all the time. He's their best shooter spotting up. Here's McCamey trying it from three, and he gets back iron, and the rebound goes to Bassett. Bassett on the push. Here's Gordon footing but does not lose control of the ball gets it to Ellis who's not a great shooter but knocks that one down from just inside the arc and the Hoosiers score the first four points of the game Gordon trying to take off as soon as he caught that ball on the secondary break you want to make sure that you're aggressive but at the same time patient and it's awfully difficult for a 19 year old kid in this kind of environment when you're the center of attention to keep your cool Illinois with the shot clock winding inside of 15. They see a lot of zone. They shoot only 30% from behind the arc. That's worse than the Big Ten. McCamey dropping it inside. Randall missed the easy one. Pruitt leading offensive rebounder in the Big Ten, and he gets one for Illinois' first bucket of the night. Averages over 3.5 offensive rebounds per game, best in the Big Ten. And that is something. Two guys have fallen now around the top of the key trying to plant. Indiana having all kinds of trouble with the handling. Gordon pulls the trigger quickly. Randall grabs the rebound. The ball goes out of bounds, and Bruce Weber, believing that Randall got pushed underneath there as he tried to grab that rebound. Bruce Weber in his fifth season, as head coach of the Illini, 2005, Big Ten Coach of the Year when he took Illinois to the national championship game before the loss to North Carolina. Here's Gordon penetrating, shooting it too hard, and now Illinois is going to have it going the other way. Kelvin Sampson in his second year as head coach at Indiana. An 18 and 3 record, and here we are. It's not quite to the 17 and a half minute mark, and Kelvin shedding the jacket. A lot of contact when Eric Gordon went to the basket in the Big Ten. You've got to be strong with the ball when you go to the 10 because you're not going to get incidental contact and go to the free throw line. Here's Meacham, usually a spot up shooter. Offensive rebound for Randall. Almost traveled with it, but got it on the floor. Ryan Randall's call. Randall got away with the walk there. I mean, we, we are seeing a different game than the Zebras have seen early on. 
Meacham for three. Shot it long. Offensive rebound again by Pruitt. He sticks it back. And goes right through the contact. So far, Illinois' best offense has been a missed shot. And John Pruitt has been dominating the paint early on on the glass. But great hands by McKamey. McKamey, the freshman, knocking loose, and Meacham on the push. Here's McKamey again. Sort of in that Illinois mold of guard is McKamey. Big-bodied kind of guy, sort of like a Darren Williams. Really strong and can get to the rim. And when he gets there, he knows what to do with it. Goes right through contact. And so far, jump shots have not been going for Illinois. But they have to continue to attack off the dribble. Ellis pulled away the rebound. Gordon tried to get something in transition. That's where he heard Illinois in the first meeting in Bloomington. He was stopped from getting off the shot. D.J. White from just inside the arc. A lot of contact inside there, and the foul is going to be called. Dead Hillary making the call, and we'll go the other way. Now watch what happens here to Eric Gordon right after he shakes hands with Chester Frazier. Frazier just runs right into him, gives him the uh, friendly chest bump, but he was really trying to knock him back and send a message that <laughs> this is not going to be a friendly encounter. It may say guest up on the scoreboard, but you're going to be mistreated in this building. And Chester Frazier didn't get a chance to mistreat Gordon when the two teams met the first time. He had a strained back muscle. He is one of three guys that Bruce Weber figures will run at Gordon and try to defend him in this game tonight. Illinois cannot be content to throw the ball around the perimeter. That's where they have to get it into the middle and let Pruitt go to work. Pruitt working hard. D.J. White pulling it away. Out the pass to Bassett. Bassett. He's the Big Ten in three-point percentage, and he knocks one down there, and Indiana has a three-point lead. Right, Bassett not considered a good shooter last year, but has really worked on his shooting and a much more confident player overall. Chester Frazier, a little trouble with the handle. And here's McKamey. Into the middle along the short corner. Those are areas that you can really attack in this zone. Illinois scored all four of its points on offensive rebounds and second chance opportunities. Shot clock now down to five. Shot coming from the corner. He's no good as Meacham had the opportunity, tipped up and finally pulled away by Bassett. Well, Trent Meacham has got to knock down open shots. So far he's gotten three of them and hasn't gotten anything. Ellis to Bassett on the left wing. Illinois still in the man defense. Here's Gordon, pounded by Frazier. Gordon showing the great range and it rims out and Randall pulls it away for the Illini. McKamey into the paint. Good ball reversal by Illinois. Kelvin Sampson sticking with that 2-3 zone and whether man or a miss. McKamey now showing his range and the freshman from the Illini knocks down the three. First one of the night for the Illini. Tied at seven. Well, that's got to give him and his teammates some confidence when the ball goes through the net. You just feel a lot better and it improves your defense. E.J. White spinning and scoring. White with his second bucket so far. And has there been a big guy in America that's done a better job all year long than D.J. White? McKamey enjoyed it so much he tried it again. That's two for the freshman. And Illinois regains the lead. Well, he's got big time ability and when he knocks down shots, now that's going to open up some driving opportunities for him to get into the lane where he is really, really strong. Ellis loses the handle, and White is there to help him out. And we picked up the intensity a little bit. A foul called just before the break. Illinois on top of Indiana by one. At zero price, successful investing is about balancing risk and reward intelligently. For each three, five, and 10 year period, over 70% of our mutual funds beat the Lipper average, finding the right opportunity. Low cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. Our engineers had a mission. Give Sierra more power, more performance, and examine everything that makes a Sierra a Sierra. Mission accomplished. The 2008 Sierra from GMC. The available 5.3 liter V8 offers 315 horsepower and the best V8 fuel economy of any full-size pickup. The Sierra from GMC. Just because it hasn't been done, doesn't mean it can't be done. 
With the Dish DVR, you can easily record every episode of all your favorite shows. Right, you said with the Dish Diver, there's a special uh, magical recordificating button that lets me uh, recordify my, my favorite cartoon shows? That's what I'm saying. Well, this is great. Because usually I miss a lot of my shows because of my job. Get the best HD DVR. Free. It's better than TiVo. And three months of programming. Free. Never miss anything with a Dish DVR from Dish Network. You can recordify or uh, recordificate. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by T. Rowe Price, providing investment management excellence for over 70 years. Invest with confidence. And in part by GMC. We are professional grade. This ESPN production of college basketball is available on ESPN HD. It is presented by Olivia. In HD, you can see the sea of orange inside Assembly Hall in Champaign. Indiana and Illinois in the fighting Illini with a one-point lead early in rivalry week, largely because of three-point shooting shit. Well, Dimitri McCamey has hit two of them right on the wing. Nobody gets a hand up in this 2-3 zone late getting there because McCamey was not emphasized as a big-time shooter. And again, Armand Bassett just late getting out there, not a sense of urgency. And when I see that, I always think of something that Judd Heathcote said years ago. Tom Izzo had told him, well, we're not going to guard this kid. He's only shooting 27% from three. And Judd told him, you think that might be because people are getting a hand up? <laughs> well, you got to guard everybody. And even though Trent Meacham is the primary three-point shooter, it doesn't mean that other guys can't knock down open looks. You want to make sure that you're getting pressure on shooters. Kelvin Sampson has sent Kyle Tabor into the game. Tabor started last time out against Northwestern, rewarded for his practice plays. The ball goes out of bounds. Now see, that was a bad shot there by Jamarcus Ellis. It's not that he can't hit that shot. It's that he took a shot off of one pass, and it was a challenge shot with a hand in his face. You want to make the defense work, that shot will still be there after a few passes and some ball reversal. Illinois has also sent in a couple of substitutions. Mike Tisdale, Rodney Alexander entering the game. This is Armand Bassett. DJ White has it in the corner, working on the big seven-footer. Hoosiers will swing it back around. Ellis now shot clock reaches 10. DJ White rises and scores. DJ White scoring again. Second leading scorer in the Big Ten. He puts Indiana back up by one. Well, DJ White has really embraced this year being a postman. You know, there were times when he wanted to be like a face up four man or even float out on the perimeter and be a three. And this year he's decided that he will play down in the post. And there haven't been more than a handful of big guys around the country that can claim to have played as well as he's played. Here's Chester Frazier. Chester shooting from three. And the Illini, the worst three-point shooting team in the league. They're feeling it early. Gordon trying to get something quick in transition. Tisdale with the block out of bounds. As Gordon tries to get to the bucket, and it appears that Steve Wilmer has made the foul call, and he did. Saturday on ESPN, Big East tips off action at noon. Number 16, Marquette taking on number 21, Notre Dame. Then things will continue. 9 o'clock Eastern time, Georgetown led by Roy Hibbert taking on Louisville in Freedom Hall. College game day will be there to get you ready Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern time, and also at 8 p.m. Eastern time. College basketball presented by Altel Wireless. Saturday primetime by DirecTV, part of Rivalry Week presented by Cisco on ESPN. And you see Ted Hillary in the middle, uh, making sure that cooler heads prevail. You see Gordon on the penetration, and the foul was called on Mike Tisdale. And Tisdale hitting the deck, and a little tough, hard-nosed foul there. And Tisdale is one of the few Illini players who has admitted that the Gordon situation with the recruitment was a little bit irritating to him as Gordon misses the first of two free throws. He's an 85% free throw shooter. Well, it doesn't matter whether it's irritating or not. This is a basketball game, not a boxing match. And everybody's trying to stare each other down. And what Chester Frazier did at, uh, you know, alternating introductions. That's why a lot of places have gotten rid of alternating introductions is because of the you know, ridiculous handshakes, guys trying to take a shot at one another. And, you know, you still need to be good sports in this thing. It's a ball game. Gordon gets on the board for the first time tonight. Illinois has a one-point lead. Well, Dimitri McCamey really opened up the floodgates in this one. I think his two threes 
have given this Illini team a lot of confidence to go against this zone. Frazier kicks it into the corner. Another three-pointer on the way, and it goes down to Rodney Alexander. And the Illini, they've hit four straight from behind the arc in their last four trips. That was all made by Chester Frazier. His penetration, getting it into the teeth of the defense and collapsing it, then kicking it to the corner. We are now seeing a very confident offensive team for Illinois. Gordon to skip pass. He found Jordan Crawford, who's ended the game, and the freshman scores, and it's a two-point edge for the Illini. Alexander, who just hit the three, McCamey, who's hit a pair of them so far. Got to move the ball from side to side, and then attack in the middle or along the short corner. If you can penetrate into a gap, make two play one, that's how you can get a shot for a teammate. Jamie has it at the top. Shot clock is hit 10. On the low block, going strong as Randall Alexander tried to follow. DJ White finally pulls it out of there. Bassett on the push. Gordon greeted by Booze every time he touches it, and he'll be called for the offensive foul. Eric Gordon is showing a little frustration. And Illinois doing a great job of making two play one. Alexander with the tray. Inspiration pulled from your life. That's professional grade. That's the Acadia from GMC. With refined styling, available overhead sky views, and the smooth ride of a luxury sedan, Acadia is helping to redefine the category. Welcome to Acadia, the crossover from GMC. Now on demand. From the guys who brought you the 40-year-old virgin and knocked up comes a comedy about going out. <laughs> Hooking up. You know when you hear girls saying like, oh, I was so calm last night, I shouldn't have slept with that guy. We could be that mistake. And fitting in. Check it, my brand new fake ID. Doesn't even have a first name, it just says McLovin. I am McLovin. Super bad. now on demand. Fios TV On Demand brings you thousands of the hottest shows and movies anytime you want. Welcome to Progressive.com. Did you find your policy okay? I did, saved over $350. We have a savings of $350. A savings of $350. You know, that comes with concierge claim service, local response claim service, and 24-7 live support, all at no extra charge. Wow. Wow, I know. I say it louder. Have a great day. Lots of extra features that don't cost you extra. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. Dari Noka, Sports Center 30 at 30. Roger Clemens and Brian McNamee both talked with Congress today. Both obviously gave different sides to a story. Also, McNamee's lawyers turned over evidence they say should prove Clemens was injected with steroids. Also, Kurt Schilling may not play at all this season for the Red Sox. Boston Publication saying he has a shoulder injury that could require surgery. Red Sox may be looking into voiding his contract. Lots more on Sports Center after the game, guys. Darren, thank you very much here in Champaign, Illinois, with a two-point lead over Indiana. It's getting a little testy in here, Pat. Yeah, it is. Uh, DJ White, senior leader for Indiana, showing his leadership skills here early. When it was getting chippy under the Indiana basket, he pushed back Jamarcus Ellis and said, hey, cut it out. And then going into that timeout, Reese, he put an arm around Eric Gordon, walked him over to the huddle, I'm sure trying to calm him down in a very charged atmosphere. All right, Pat and Jay, we talked about it at the very beginning, exactly how Gordon reacts. These fans are going to be on him. I mean, there are longtime observers of Illinois basketball who believe that this would be the most intense.